What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Trax, and we're coming to you live right now with a very good Feel Good Thursday edition. Man, we're really excited to talk about this top 30 that the Chicago Bears has got. To my left, we got Pinky in the building. We got Q. We got BJ. We got Bishop, our man from uh, Nomad. We're really excited to have him. And we also got Griff. So I'm going to steal a little uh, thing from you guys, but I'm going to spin it and... Uh, talk about it in a different uh, light, uh, Bishop. You guys talk about the pleasantries. I'm going to talk about the nugget of the day, something that really special hits you, and then just kind of do a little introduction of yourself, and then we'll go around the horn, and then we'll start to uh, unpack this uh, top 30, whether or not the Bears got the right top 30, you know? So let's okay. start off with my man Pinky, then go to Q, then BJ, then uh, Bishop. And then uh, last but not least, cleaning up, Griff. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Leroy Pinky the Phenom in the building. You know what I'm saying? Much love and respect for everybody. Please like and subscribe to the show. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to the next intro. What's up, everybody? I'm just real excited to be with you guys. I got, I'm on vacation. Been taking care of a lot of stuff around the house. Been hopping on different <laughs> podcasts. Been just kind of enjoying uh, everything. I wish the weather was uh, a little bit better, but we're inching yeah. away, getting closer yeah. and closer to nicer weather. You know, I don't have that real nice uh, feel-good weather like Bishop's got down there in Texas, but uh, <laughs> we, will, we will soon, man. At least we got Bishop in the building to bring us a little bit of sunshine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Q, oh, yeah. what's up, Q? Yes, Not sir. Much, man, just same old, oh. same old, man. Slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> I like that hat, bro. I like that hat. Yeah, yeah. Solid. Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. BJ, what's up, buddy? What's your nugget what's, of the day, man? What you got? What's going on, guys? Thanks for being here with us. Um, I'm just ready to get into it, ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, honestly. I wish the season was starting now. I'm ready for it now. <laughs> Let's go. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. I see you over here, twin. I see you over oh, there, yeah. twin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, twin. yeah. What's up, bro? <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. My little nugget for the day is um, simply this, man. Even though you might not felt you hit your goals today, but if you made any type of little small steps toward it, then it was a successful day. So with that being said, for everybody, right. whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're working on a job, you're a husband, wife, or a significant other, just make sure that, one, you're taking baby steps to reach your goals, but more importantly, be a blessing to be a blessing, okay? Mm. Love it. I like that. I like that, man. I heard that, man. Nice. Nice. Man, Good. appreciate it. Big Dre Dog, Griff Dog, man. Look, I, it's been a minute since I've been on here, man. I feel recharged, man. I feel re rejuvenated. I'm glad to be back here with the guys, man. And my little nugget of the day is I'm going to kind of piggyback off the bishop right here, man. A slow progression is better than no progression. Mm. Let's get this going, baby. I love that. I love that. It's good, man. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. I felt recharged just seeing you, Griff Dog. So if that's any consultation to you, man, I'm going to give Bad. you a, a great big virtual hug, man, across, <laughs> Appreciate all that, the way across all these states, bro. So yes, let's sir. let's get into it real quick, man. Top 30. Uh, right off the rip, uh, Caleb Williams, you know, a couple things that uh, come to mind when I talk about Caleb. They just had dinner with the cat. Uh, they put him, you know, they wine and dine him, real nice steakhouse. They put him with some of the uh, top players, the Bears and stuff, not even with the, you know, the the staff members, but they put him with the actual uh, Bears players. I thought that was real nice, real special. And to the point, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think this is his first and last visit with any other team. So I think that's it, you know, whether or not that's, you know, blowing smoke or, you know, temporary uh, feel right now. And maybe he moves into something else. But as of right now, uh, I think it's his first stop and his last stop. So um, without further ado, let's break out uh, some of his uh, pros. Uh, one thing that I noticed about him is his, his arm talent, the way that he can get, uh, you know, hit different angles and, and whatnot and the, the attention to detail and perfecting his craft. 
uh, basically he gets into this whole dynamic of working in and out of these angles and getting his body in shape as a type of a quarterback. Uh, he looks at um, Tom Brady and the way he uh, stretches and exercises and stuff, and he models everything that he does to that. So I like that. I like that he is um, – I like his incredible uh, off scriptness, you know, way that he can just uh, adapt on the fly, but yet still get back into the pocket, keep his eyes downfield, and then drop it like it's hot to any of the receivers that he sees that is open. Um, that could be a problem when you're extending it and you're trying to get, you know, the most bang for your buck instead of the the quickest available receiver that, you know, could keep you out of hot water, uh, looking for the person that might get you that extra yards that, you know, them chunk plays that could get you into trouble. But, uh, yeah, what, what do you think real quick uh, about Caleb, uh, Pinky? All right, for me, uh, I, I, I tend to agree with, the you know, a lot of the positive assessments with him. Um I'll quickly go into one of the things that they say is a um, a con, but I still view it as a positive thing. And they say, yeah, what you got? The fearlessness is a big is a big positive for huge plays, but it also leads him to hold on to the ball too long. I agree that the hold on to the ball is a con, but I find it more as an asset when you're doing like what you're saying when he's looking down the field for the big play you know he's you know it because you know when his eyes are still down the field he still can get you that five maybe that you know that three four or five yard play that you need to get the first down but it's the fact that you know he's rolling when he rolls out the pocket it gives you that you know that's the only time he's holding on to the ball because he's rolling out the pocket just to get a receiver an extra time to get that extra yardage. It's not that he's holding on to the ball like Justin was doing because he's trying to get the guy, he's waiting for the guy to get open. He can throw people open. So that's more of an asset when he is doing that, when he's holding on to the ball. So there's, it's organized chaos, I guess, when he's doing it. So I don't really see him holding on to the ball as a weakness. So. Okay. Yeah, I wanna, All right. You kind of wanted to dig at, but. Yeah, what about you, Q? What, give me a pro and a con about Caleb right now. We're just putting him on the stand, seeing if he's even worthy of a top 30, you know, pick. And then we'll we'll go from there. You know, that's kind of what we got going on, Q, uh, that that feel that uh, Ryan was talking about where you, you would break into groups, you know, and, and look at these guys and then all kind of come together collectively as to whether or not, you know, there's somebody that, that we're going to look at. So we're going to kind of get a little bit of that feel, you know. And look at this whole smorgasbord of top 30 and just kind of vote on it, you know, whether or not they've actually got this top 30 right, you know. So what, what do you see, Q, with Caleb, a pro and con? Well, the pro that I love, the one thing I love about the pro is that he keeps his eyes down the field. Even when he's scrambling, he, he you can, we so used to Justin taking off, which is fine. But this guy, you know, he keeps his eyes down the field and he hits some crazy accurate passes with the flick of the wrist, which is very impressive, you know. But the more the con, I, I really think he could grow out of that is a lot of times when, you, when you're when you a star from high school, from Pee Wee, you always get the big play. So you're used to kind of, especially when you play in this Lincoln Rally system, it's always big plays. So he's going to, I think he's, that's really coachable. So I'm not really worried about that con, you know, but I just want to speak on that. I think he'll take the check downs. He'll learn to take the check downs because the NFL is a different beast. You're not going to have those open plays 24-7. He's not going to have all that time to throw the ball. The lines, the D-lines are quicker. Everybody's quicker. So I'm not really worried about the cons. That's one of the cons I saw. He could, he, I appreciate him wanting to get the big play, but he'll he'll learn that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All BJ, are you on mic? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here. here. I'm here. No, okay. I'm here. I can hear you for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So, so for me, the um, the pros are pretty obvious. You know, he's pretty accurate with with the uh, with the ball. Um, he 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 looks for the best play possible. But I think the the con for me is going to be opposite of uh, of Pinky. I think that 
um, him holding on to the ball. The game in college is a lot slower than the game in the NFL. So I think with him holding on to the ball, looking for the best play possible could be could be something to be a little bit concerned about because, you know, is he able to adapt to the faster pace of the NFL? If he is, then he'll be fine. But it's just all about him adapting to the faster pace of the NFL versus uh, college. Okay. All right. Hey, you know, uh, speaking of, of Caleb in this top 30, what you really want to do is look at our, our uh, TC World of Wonders. They are our headquarters for all of your jersey attire, all your ball caps for the draft. They got all the draft swag, man, all the nice stuff. This guy's been with us for a couple years now. He was our very first sponsor. Everything is handcrafted, stitched, woven, really good quality stuff. He backs it up. If it's not working, send it right back to him. Zero sales tax, 100% uh, money back guarantee. And tax free, man. I, I love this guy. So look at all of your Chicago sports jerseys and memorabilia at TC's World of Wonders. Check out Tom's all of his gear and collectibles at tcworldofwonders.com. Without further ado, Bishop from Nomad. Hey, Bishop, what do you got to say about Caleb, brother? What's a pro and con that you got? Okay, I'm going to try to be detailed with this and not take up a lot of time on it. Hmm. One, I'm going to. I've watched a lot of his games, especially this this past season, um, versus what I saw uh, his Heisman year. And what I a positive is his arm talent. Absolutely, that that's a that's a definite. He has the arm talent, and it's not much. I'm I'm not going to focus as much on that as I'm going to pivot, and what I think can be a negative. Okay. In the system that he in the system that he played in at USC, primarily if not every snap was out of the shotgun. So mm -hmm. what I want to see is him to be able to transition to Waldron's system where 60 to 70 percent of those snaps are under center, mm. which wow. changes your footwork, yes. it changes your delivery, it changes your reads. So mm -hmm. when BJ was saying transitioning. And not having that time like you did in college to have literally, I watched some games where he literally had 10 seconds back there before he had to get rid of the football. You're not going <laughs> to have that in the NFL at no, all. No. So what I'm really hoping for, and I don't, and I, what I don't want to do is make it sound negative toward him. What I'm hoping that they can do is because there won't be any film on him coming into the NFL, that they do everything that he does well starting out and slowly build that scheme into his skill set into and, and everything and work him into under center you know and, and start working that into his game where he it allows him to kind of understand one what the defenses that he's seeing because he's going to see some defenses coming in the NFL he did not see in college especially out of the Pac-12 so that alone too is going to determine whether or not he is he can definitely be the, the guy the face of the franchise. Can mm, he do it? Right. I think he's smart enough and think he has the capability of doing so. Um I also want to see him get in the weight room a little more because he's gonna need to he gonna need to <laughs> he's gonna need to beef it up some, you know, yeah and, and get a little stronger, you know, just upper body and lower body because trust me, he's gonna take some hits, man. You know, and, and you mm. want to try to keep him as clean as possible. But if he goes off script to where he opens himself up to getting hit, he got he gonna have to be able to handle it. And one thing we know, them guys hit a lot harder in the NFL, and they're a lot bigger <laughs> and faster than he saw in college. So, but other than that, man, I'm not gonna harp on what he doesn't do well. What I all I want to do is see what they can build around him, especially like I said, it's gonna take the the league to catch up to him. By week eight, they'll have enough game film to where the second half of the season teams can make adjustments, which means primarily the teams that we're going to face in our own division. So they'll get a chance to make adjustments based off of what they see from him. But starting out, if the Bears are smart and they can definitely utilize the fact that there is no tape on him and let him just kind of work 
his own personal magic and slowly, I won't say slowly, but build the offensive scheme based on his skill set, I think they could be successful starting out. Man, I'll tell you what, anytime that you're on our pod, we are successful starting out. I mean, it is just like putting the cherry on top of a Sunday, brother, just like they do <laughs> at Serendipity Ice Cream Parlor. Go over there and get yourself some delif- delicious, where it's always summertime at Serendipity Ice Cream Parlor. Parlor Serving up heaven, bro. Heaven in a cup, just like that. I, I recommend their delectable uh, funnel cake sundae. Oh, my God. It is so delicious and scrumptious. At 120 North Griffith Boulevard in Griffith, Indiana. Check it out, man. I love this chat really quick. I'm going to hit him up, Griff, and you are batting up, clean up. The best is always for last. But really quick, I got a special yeah. shout out to uh, YouTube, all of our YouTube Man, you guys are coming in hot as we're approaching 50 in the building. We got Dustin Jones. What's up, fellas? He says, Logan Pilcher, man, thanks for coming in. Bear down, baby. Wit from Texas. The weather is great. Oh, you got rubbing in, Wit. <laughs> Dang, bro. You got, you got a name there, bro, and, and with Wit. Uh, Odo, um, he's worried about the Bills and uh, the Falcons for a Dunze. Ron Wernernaski, Caleb is a bear. Okay. Yeah. So Lo- Logan, uh, everybody, man, just coming in. I want to thank you guys. Uh, Smitty Q, what up, good Yo, people? Hey, Smitty. Jose Sanchez, uh, man, we got a lot of people in here, man. Keep it coming, guys. We're going to make sure that we, uh, we're going to make sure you get heard. If you got any questions, comments, whatever, we're going to check it out, man. Keep dropping it like it's hot. Griff, what do you got to say about uh, about Caleb, man? Good, good and bad and the ugly. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna keep it brief. I'm gonna start with with some of the cons, and some of the cons are things that we all pretty much agree on, and that's holding the ball, you know, a little bit longer, trying to make a play. We all could agree on that. My whole thing with that is, I think that's coachable. Um, you want to give it, it got to be a balance, though. You don't want to completely take that away from his game because that is one of the things that makes him special. So it got to be a balance, but as we all know in the, in the league, it's not going to be 10 seconds, five seconds. So we get that. One of the things that stood out to me on the pro side when I'm watching this guy, watching a lot of film of him now, is we know his arm strength is 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 really good. His pocket presence is is very good to me when I'm looking at it. Oh, uh, the way he can step in and out, side to side in the pocket like that when he don't even, when he's not even looking, he just steps up, he feels it. So he he got that going for him and. You know, that, that kind of excites me, you know what I mean, being able to step in because not a lot of young quarterbacks, it takes time to master that that pocket presence. It's a really hard thing to do. So that was some of the pros that I've seen from him. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm a long, uh, I'm right there with you as far as the excitement. I like his pocket presence. I like how he can keep those eyes always constantly surveying down the field, trying to get his, uh, his teammates – in view and when he sees a big chunk of grass where he could just take off he he sits back pulls up it, it kind of reminds me of a fighter jet you know where they take off and then they hit that break and then they mm-hmm. freaking survey yeah. and see what's going on man I, I really like that uh specialty about him so i mean i think we're on board everybody's yeah. okay with uh caleb coming in the building i i think as a top 30 i think he passes if anybody yeah. has any, uh anything opposing we'll go ahead and uh, yeah, one thing. Or, what I just got one thing in closing about about him that um, okay so we'll we'll go ahead and move on to Roma Roma Dun- Dunze as soon as you're done with your final comment yeah. uh, we got about ten more minutes and then we got to let uh, our boy Bishop go so let's make okay. it quick all right the my quick thing is that for the the comparison the Aaron Rodgers of uh, Patrick Mahomes hybrid um. I want to say I agree with that. Uh, And what I like is that they put Aaron Rodgers first. And the reason why I say he's more Aaron Rodgers than he is Patrick Mahomes is if you, and I say it's more because of his personality. His personality traits definitely match up well with the way Aaron Rodgers was coming into, when he was coming into the draft. He had that same air of confidence about him. You know, very intelligent, very cerebral, very 
conscientious of what he was saying and what he was doing, his plan. Now, the one thing I will say that I'm that I'm happy about the Bears compared to what the 49ers or what they did, the 49ers overthought it. You know, they 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 went with the safe bet and Alex Smith and yep. we not and passed on Rodgers. We aren't gonna do that. So I'm happy right. that we're not we're we're taking the, the sure thing. Yeah. And, right. and Taylor. So yeah, I so, agree with so, you. So, I just want to right. that. We'll go to a doomsday. Yes. No, I, I like that, man. And and let's uh let's go ahead and uh drop it right into uh Bishop's lap. Uh, while Bishop, while we still have him, uh, Roma Dunze, what do you say? Uh, good, good, the bad, the ugly, Bishop. Believe it or not, he's one of my top receivers, man. Uh, I like his work ethic. I had a chance of watching him this entire season. I love his approach to the game. I think he I, I think a lot of people are asleep on him. You know, I get the whole Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, everything with him that comes along with him, the pedigree and all. But I would not sleep on Rome, man. I like Rome a lot. Um, I like what he has to offer, you know, in terms of size, speed, hands. He may not be the cleanest route runner right now but that you know that'll come with time and you know once he get into a system and they can actually start working with him on that he'll he'll improve on that because the kid his work ethic just screams that he wants to be great you know and, and you want that out of a guy that, that you're projecting to be a, you know a first round pick and especially if, if he's available at nine you know as much as i've been screaming on our show that we should go we should try to get a dn the more I think about it now, as we're getting closer, and I realize, you know what, Keenan Allen, they did not extend him and may not extend him until well into the season if they decide to do so. We better try to get somebody that we know we can have come in and run that and, and be that X. And uh, Rome can definitely be that X for the Bears. And I, I, plus, again, I think he his style of play will complement Caleb, especially in the beginning. You know, again, as they're rolling things out. So I like Roma Duzzi. I think that was a, a good a good opportunity for them to get him in the building, get a chance to sit down with that young man and get to know more about him. And I guarantee you they they walked away impressed. Okay. Yeah, you know, and he kind of gives me that feel that you, you look at the, the quarterback that he already has in place. Are they different? Yes, but there are some similarities. So maybe that gives Rome some, some of that feel, you know, where – it's 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 kind of like a home hometown feel about it, you know what I mean? So I do like Rome. I, I like the fact that he uh, can block too. I like a receiver that can block. That's important. Kind of like that guy you guys were talking about that you could pick later on in the draft from Alabama. I, you know, they you guys were talking oh, yeah. about how kind of yeah. has that Heinz Ward feel to him where he can mm -hmm. block and all that. That's important to me. I know uh, personally, I like anybody that can. Uh, extend the play above and beyond, even when the ball is not in your hands. If you're trying to move that ball forward in any way, shape, or form, especially with blocking, I think that's really cool. What do you say, Q? What do you, What do you like about Rome? <laughs> oh man, Rome. He he became one. I think he. Be, I put him over Marvin Harrison now, man. When I watch a little bit more film on him, like you oh. said, the blocking, man, it's tough. The blocking, tough. You catching, you catching traffic, man. I love that, man. I, I hope he's there at nine. This Bears offense got a chance to be very dangerous, man. If they, oh my god, <laughs> I love it. What about it. you, Beach? So, so I know how everybody at the beginning, not 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 on the show, but just at the at the beginning, how everybody was so high on Marvin Harrison. But yeah. I've always been high on Rome because if you just watch him. He he yeah. looks so natural out there. Okay. He he look he look it looks effortlessly, especially in the um in that playoff game, his last game. Uh, was that the national championship game? The Washington. Uh, yes. It, it, he just looked, even though even though they didn't win, he looked so. It just looked so effortlessly. You know, it just looked like he was just. It was just something he was born to do: be a wide <laughs> receiver. And and, and, and you. You know, you don't you don't see that all the time. You see it every once in a blue moon. And I just think that he has that that natural gift that is just hard to overlook. Huh. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What about you, Pinky? Hey, 
Hey, Rome wasn't built in the day, but man, he he make the he making the case that it was. <laughs> that that, that brother is smooth, like he's smooth as silk. Like, like I agree that he can he can work on his route running, but the fact that he has beautiful footwork speed, and like you said, the blocking is something you can't teach. You either have that dog mentality to want to block, or you don't. And that's the right. one thing I feel out of the the top three guys is the one thing he's better at all three, like. He comes off the block. If he blocking you, like you, it, and the way he comes off his comes off the ball. If you watch the tape, like and I'm, I'm sure you, I'm sure you have Bishop, is that you see, you know, whether he's getting the ball or not, he comes off, the, he comes off that line as if he's getting the ball, and then yeah. mm, he hitting. Yeah, you, you don't, yeah. you don't see it coming. Like he makes it look like he's running the route every time, and then he he make a quick move, and then boom, and he got a forearm in you. He's putting his pads. He's you feeling him. He's right there. He he the block is there. Like he is stuck to you, you don't move, and he's not holding. He makes it look very fluent within his route run. It's beautiful. You can't teach it. You can't teach that, and that's and that's probably it's more the reason why I was saying that. I hope I have a feeling he's gonna fall more to us than Malik Neighbors because Malik Neighbors gives off that flash that you know that Odell Beckham thing. So <laughs> you know being at being at LSU, so he has yeah. that going for him. But um. Yeah, Rome is why you know I see him being that, and plus he wants to be there. He wants to play for us. <laughs> he, you know, and you know what? You know, you know what else too, uh, Pinky. Real quick, I like yeah. I like his approach. I I love he catches the ball at the at the point of attack. More importantly, his his those 50-50 balls. He fight for those 50-50 balls, man. You just mm -hmm. the dude work. It's just his 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 work ethic, man. It's just and. and I like him, man. I, I'm high on him myself. Yeah. 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 yeah I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm very high on uh, Ron myself, man. Uh, he's what we call a football player. You know what I mean? <laughs> what I mean by that is, you got some receivers out here when they number not called, they won't even move. They not. You know what I mean? <laughs> they won't. Y'all seen it before? They yeah. won't even mm -hmm. move. This yeah. guy, I love brought. that. He is out there that. battling with the with the with the corner all game. He's giving if he's not catching the ball, he's trying to put you on your butt. And I love that. That's the Chicago Bear mentality. On top of his, you know, he got the hands. The route running can always be coached. That I love his approach to the game. He gonna he'll bring some fire to this team if we able to get him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I know I like who he reminds me of for me. He reminds me of for me coming out of. Keyshawn Johnson out of UC, how he's a big body. Mm -hmm. Just love to to wow. get at get at the DN. He reminds me love of so him. much, man. Guys, Keyshawn was the last receiver drafted number right one too. Now. We got Bishop that's gonna stay here for another fifteen minutes, guys. So third Bishop, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love Bishop. Much love, brother. Much love. Right. No problem, fellas. Let's let, let's dive into this. Yeah, okay, yeah. so next on the it, – it sounds like it's unanimous. It's a great look, uh, and I don't even know if we go further. We proceed further with Malik since uh, Rome is, is is unanimous, but let's let's go ahead and do it anyway just in case something goes sideways in the draft. We got to have that backup plan. Maybe Malik's it. Uh, Bish, Bishop, what do you got to say about Malik neighbors, man? Pros and cons. Mm. <laughs> I mean, honestly, man. Um, I know that everybody we need an X, and that's and I even said that that's why I'm, I'm high on Rome. But man, Malik, that's another one, man. He's a dog, bro. Yeah, he's a dog. Yeah. You know, and when it comes, I mean, separation, good soft hands, man. Very good route running. Only going and he's only going to get better. That's the thing, you know. And, and that's what I like about this wide receiver class as a whole, man. You know, I see a lot of guys that's going to that have very high ceilings, you know. But since we're talking about Malik, man, I I don't have nothing bad to say about the young man at all, man. In terms of what I've seen, other than okay, he, so he's not six foot four, six foot three, six foot four. But, but I mean, the dude, man, is just you know separation. Catching the ball, route running, and, and he'll block too. That's the thing. People sleep on him. He 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 do he do some blocking too. So, look, man, 
can't say nothing bad about that guy. I'm gonna let y'all handle that on it because I, hey, I, I didn't say it enough. You know, when you talk about this explosive footwork and this speed and everything, moving in and out in this elite athleticism, you you look at it. I'm like, why am I getting so tongue tied on words this last couple of days, man? You go get checked out, man. Check out the eyes. You get the little dilation. What's going on, man? No, uh, it, when you look at all of that and the vertical thread of, of, of who he is, I mean, you could see easily how they compare him to uh, downtown Antonio Brown, man. I mean, yeah. outside yeah. of, you know, Chopper's following him and his shirt off, let's hope that <laughs> I wish the brother well, man. I, I, you know, don't cross the goat. Whatever you do, don't cross the goat at the very end of everything because he's the only one to add your back, okay, from start to finish. But, no, nah, man, Malik, man, he sounds like a great guy. What What do you say about him? What do you say about him, Q? Man, is a home run hitter, man. So, yeah, him or, or – wasn't he can't go wrong. And the one thing they said is cons was we could definitely get fixed with that receiver room is him attacking the ball and letting the ball come to his body. That – that could be fixed right away as soon as you get to OTAs or, you know, whenever mini rookie camp, if the Bears do, if he's there for the Bears, you know. But he's a Antonio Brown all the way, man. Mm. And it was a time when Antonio Brown was probably the best receiver in the league for a few years, man. Bro, oh, he, oh, was hits, yeah. to be exact. Before, <laughs> he took, before he took that hit, man, he was hard. <laughs> he, was, he was that guy. And what was he? What? Did he this get hit or what the was he hitting? This is why I say the Bears are in the, the Bears are in a great spot right now, man. It is so exciting. <laughs> yes. Right, what about you, got... DJ? What do you got to say? So, so I, I really don't have a con, but if I had to pick one, if I had to pick one, I'll piggyback on what I said last week. I think the only con would be would he be able to mesh well with everybody, all the other receivers in the locker room? Yeah, yeah. I mm. think, yeah. And the reason why I say that is because of his, I want the ball and demanding the ball, would that translate with, you know, with the veteran receivers that are already there, that's already proven to be, you know, NFL legit receivers? That, I want that's, that my, that's, I, my only, that's my only negative. And, and I, I don't even know if it's, if it's even going to be a That's negative. not even a negative. You want that, man, especially out of a rookie? Why not? Yeah, and come take man, this you ball. You want that. You want that, mm -hmm. man. So that way okay. now you know you got you got three dogs on the field at one time, and, and they yeah. all want the ball. So it's just a matter now who gets open, and, and it, that just put more pressure on the defense. So, no, man, please, yeah, want that ball, baby. Want that ball. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's like, right. it's like, I was trying to figure out a negative. I, I really you. didn't have one, so I was just throwing something out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only negative that's, that's really out there is that the only negative that's out there is if he don't fall to us. That's it. That's the only negative. <laughs> that he don't well, fall to us. I that he want to play for somebody else. That's really the only negative you got. Because in my opinion – yeah, my the, my opinion. I mean, Antonio Brown's pretty accurate because of the body and the build. But for me, with the way his, with his attitude and the way he plays the game out there, Tyreek Hill, slower version of Tyreek Hill. That's literally what I see when I see this man get the ball. He is built like a running back for his size at six feet tall, yeah, and he I is just. I mean, I he looks a little thin, but like when you see him closer with the other guys at LSU, because those are big boys, he ain't small. He played bigger than his body stature says. You know what I'm saying? Like the only, you know, obviously he gotta he gotta work on snatching the ball away for the 50 50 balls more. You know what I'm saying? He wait for the ball to come to him so the ball gets batted down sometimes. But beyond that, like you said, home run every time he touched the ball. Like you miss, Lord help you, because that safety is a business decision, and they ain't gonna be able to make it. <laughs> they ain't gonna be able to make it. They're gonna be on the sideline wondering how they how they missed this dude when they was like. Right there, he's he cold, too cold. I love him. Like man, speaking of cold, man, look at Smitty coming in. I mean, dude, yeah, a Dunze, a Dunze is what Claypool was supposed to be. That is a great Ooh. take. Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
that that, that very yeah, well exactly. might be why we're going to go ahead and, and look at him first. So, hmm. I mean, there that's something to look at right there, fellas. What about you, Griff? What do you got to say? Mike Smitty. Man, uh, neighbors, I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about him at all. The only thing I will say is I think, just my opinion, I think if they had the chance to go between one of the two, I think they go they'll go wrong because of the size. That's just mm-hmm. that's it. But you talking about a walking grenade? <laughs> he, he ready to explode like a five yard slant. He he ready to go. I mean, I would love to have. I mean, I think he could have that Zay Flowers type of impact on the team coming right in and out the gates. I really do. I, I, I can see that. Flowers. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, that, that was, oh man, you talk about embarrassment of riches for Caleb. Jeez. Y'all, y'all notice, y'all notice LSU didn't turned into raw receiver. You man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. Why, oh my God. God. So yeah. Wait, I gotta, I gotta throw, I, I gotta throw something at Pinky though. Pinky, I, I, I like how you threw that in there. That he's a slower version, a slower Tyreek. Hill and I'm like, well, well, damn, the man ran a four three five. I mean, <laughs> that's sm- if that's slow, then <laughs> oh, Jesus. Damn. Well, I would say that because you know, say Tariq then ran a, a yeah. three, almost a three nine. I mean, the man like almost a four six. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, he, I mean, well, he he ran. A, he, he didn't do as good as uh as um the young man that ran this year at four two two, but he 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 ran. Oh, yeah. I mean, but we see how much faster Tyreek is on the field, though. That's what I'm saying. Like his games, yeah. Game so, are you, so, 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 are you gonna be? Are you gonna be questioning where these uh, speed on the field? Oh Hell boy, no. not in the Bears uniform. I'm not. No, no. <laughs> no. you're not questioning what, regardless of what uniform he wears. You better not question. Oh, no, no, no. Every, saying, you better. Be, every be defense question is gonna be paying Chicago. attention. I can promise you I won't question him if he's in Chicago. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, that wouldn't look. That wouldn't be a bad move either. Put him in the slot. Oh my God, brother! Yeah. Look at here, fellas. But anyway, fellas, I really digress. <laughs> fellas, one thing we will not question is the Hall of Fame menu at Bridges Scoreboard, your Northwest oh. Indiana <laughs> Chicago sports headquarters, with the Hall of Fame menu and the coldest beer in Chicago land. To prep for yes. your next Chicago sports night, visit bridgescoreboard.com or call 219-924-2204. Man, I'll tell you what, I love their food there and it shows. So they still got without, the 50 cent wing night. They still got it, baby. Well, oh. it's it's a 75 buy one, get one on Thursdays for the boneless and and Mondays is uh it's a great deal man it's a great man, deal Missy man was I love feeding it. her brother she was feeding her brother good those tater tots bro oh, she dude. gave me wings oh my god you got that you got that southern hospitality from Misty in uh Texas man whenever you Ooh. sit down man they just bring it all to you if they oh. look like you're even the slightest bit hungry or see your eyes wandering over to something else they'll grab that gravy boat and pour it all over the top for you yeah, she's good, man. She's good people. Look, I hey, listen. Look. Just made me we hungry. Up, we all got to hook up and go down at Bridges Court. I'm telling that that spot is legit. I'm telling you, Griff, Q, BJ, we we got to find a time to hook up and we got to get out there just to go eat. We ain't got to do no podcast. So go <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go, fellas. We got a lot of. We we were talking the other day about. Uh, getting together the podcast together and, and having some of these events come up as you know together so we can you know bond and hang out break bread and just have a good time you know what i mean we don't even have to get the cameras out we don't even have to create content i mean lord knows it's going to happen especially if we <laughs> get all together in the same building there's going to be some content you know yeah, but it's yeah. going to happen uh, all nat- oh, natural man speaking of natural bro speaking of natural let's get to the next uh brother in the building uh, this guy, I didn't really know a whole lot about him. I'm not going to lie. And, and I, it's kind of like a head scratcher, Bishop, when you look at another running back that they're interested in. And D- Dylan Lube or Laub or L-A-U-B-E. I, I don't even know how to. I just murdered that name, man. But he's out of, <laughs> he, he's out of UNH. So I had to look at him because, you know, it's compar- comparable to a, a player. And it was uh, Chris Rainey who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember him. Yeah, I used him on Madden, bro, because he was <laughs> faster than the word of God, dude. You get around that corner and it was off to the races, Chris Rainey, man. So uh, he ended up being a good uh, returner. 
uh, return guy. But outside of that, I really don't know a whole lot about this, Dylan. And why are they looking at another running back? How do you say about that, Bishop? Oh, I can see them looking at another running back. They they want a, a change of pace type guy, and I think they're getting okay. themselves ready. For, I think they're also getting themselves ready for Will. I don't see them extending Herbert after this season. So, they, you know, and, and knowing Ryan Poe is being consistent with what he does, man, he's going to – there's certain positions he's going to always draft, and running back is one of those positions because even though they don't have – they're not giving them the value necessary, it's proven in the playoffs and in the, and when you get into the Super Bowl that you need yes, a, a bona fide running back. And if you got to – and imagine this. You got Swift, you got Johnson, currently Herbert, and then if you bring this young man in and for whatever reason you can work him into getting some snaps, that would be great. But then also he can contribute on special teams, you know. So mm-hmm. now yeah, you can yeah. put him back there as another weapon, especially with kickoffs and with the new kickoff rule. I mean, come on, man. You, you, you If you put speed on, on both sides to where now if you when you kick that football on the kickoff, we got an opportunity to always take it to the house, you know. So, uh, poles being poles, man, he, he, you know, and one thing about the Bears, they like speed, you know, so they're going to always go after speed. But I think they're looking for that, just that change of pace type back. I know Swift gives them that, but to bring in a younger version of, of someone that can be kind of similar, but yeah. fill the void. And the main thing is if he's, if he's halfway decent in, in, in pass pro, then he'll definitely uh, at some point fill in the void for Herbert because I, I believe this is going to probably be our last season with Herbert. Yeah, unless he has a you say, Q? Yeah, I think I, I, I agree with everything he just said. I think Herbert, this is last year. You know, I think he – it was kind of disappointing. Well, he got – it was disappointing last year at the end of the day. But I see this one as a – you can never have too many running backs as far as in today's NFL, you know. And I think it's mostly, and I've seen that he's special teams. That I, I think he could be. A, I think this that's a special teams move right there, because I do see um, J- Johnson and Washington getting bulk of the carries. So this might be like a change of pace back, third down, scat back, something like that. You know, I gotta see more. I gotta look more into it with this guy. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, to to piggyback off of what Bishop said really quick. He does have reliable hands in the receiving game. I did see that right now. So if you guys are wondering why I put the hoodie on, I'm actually in my garage right now where it's ice cold. So I I had to layer up a little bit, you know, get the head a little warm. And, you know, it's 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 a little chilly. Uh, My man, tough when you know for us, man. Y'all gotta get them he likes said, up. You know what I'm saying? Tracks out here is toughing it out in this cold ass weather. Y'all gotta y'all get the likes and subscribe buttons. Come on, y'all. Hit the yeah. like. I feel button, for man. you, tracks. I feel for you, brother. It's uh, it's it's uh, seventy you degrees. Lie. It's a it's a whopping eighty-six <laughs> degrees this here, dude. This it's, dude is looking a, at his a, window today, and in his glasses, degrees. you can see Eight, the sunlight Eight, off crazy. his glasses, and I'm yeah, like, oh, man. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> BJ, sorry, what do you I got? Didn't, BJ? I didn't mean to rub it in. Oh no, you did. Uh, yeah. so. So, Wearing another um, death row record shirt. <laughs> like, like you, I, I, I don't know too much of, of, of uh, Dylan, but I think as the reason why the Bears may be looking at another running back, I don't think that the Bears are going to hold on to Khalil yeah, this yeah. year. I think, yeah. I think they're, they're going to try to trade him at some point, maybe during the draft or at some point in the season, because I don't, I don't think he's going to be with the Bears. Um, too much longer. Wow. And, wow. And, and I and I think a clear sign of that is when they went out and signed uh, Swift. Because if they if they yeah. were going to keep if they were going to keep Khalil, they they would they would they would have um they would have um extended him. So I I think that's a a, a a a sign there that they're probably looking in a different direction at a at a younger back maybe. Hmm. Bro, you know, you know the coolest stat that I have about um, uh, what do you call it? that running back? You just said that we're gonna get rid of uh, what? what what's Khalil his name? Herbert. Khalil yeah, Herbert. Khalil. He he has. We got a discount, bro. He's got extra digits. He's got extra fingers. He's got six fingers, 
and he's got six toes on each. So we got, you know, we, we got a discount on that guy, man. That's, he got, you he know, got I think six fingers in the still building. Dropping, can't really catch well, up. He should be able to block better then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Khalil's cool, but I mean, I'm okay with moving on from Khalil. I, I'm, I mean, he's, I hear you. Know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, stuck on them, you know? Yeah. Can, can I just say one thing? I, and I don't want to argue with you, BJ, but uh -huh. here's one thing that, that I will say. And I, I almost felt like jumping in as much as I could when I was watching the, the Nomad uh, podcast earlier when they were breaking down our offensive linemen and, and saying, you know, how much, you, you know, we, we, we need to build it up a little bit more because it really ain't. Here's the deal. And I know everybody will agree with this as soon as it comes out of my mouth, because you guys already know that it's true. We had a horrible play caller last year. Almost absolutely. to the absolutely. I, I couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand him. Please let's not bring him up no more. I can't stand <laughs> I'm not even saying the name. I Here's a swear jar. Him. If I put if I say something, I'm gonna put a dollar bill or maybe even a five dollar bill. This is our swear <laughs> jar if we even bring up that dude's name. But what I will say this imagine. Playing for that man. Imagine, Ooh. imagine having to execute all these uh screen passes and everything and whatever. He called 20 screen passes in a row. 20 in one bro. game. Bro, execute. Oh execute. I'm just I'm just saying to, to that what's point, that? Execute. To that, point, to that point of exhausting yourself as a fan. Think about it from a, a player standpoint of blocking. And when you start to see these chunk plays and, and, and this master crafting of what Waldron is going to take care of and all these receivers that Bishop's talking about, when you get the, the X, Y, the Z, the tight end, everybody's out there and they're orchestrated. And it, 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 it creates, I'm telling you personally, as an offensive lineman, when you see things start to uh, un unfold and you start to see progression your blocking hits differently bro you you go all in you you give a little bit of extra and i know that's not even just from the offensive line standpoint hold what you got to say your analysis of Khalil Herbert because this year he might prove you wrong and i hope he does because he we already got him in the building so why not go hold, hold and and you know go ahead and keep keep him in the building. You know what I'm saying? I think these guys who we've already got might surprise you just because in the one uh, aspect alone of calling plays in, in the right manner, you know what I mean? I think it's going to yeah. make a big difference, you know? Hey, hey, yeah. hey Brandon, I got a question for you. You might want to put some hey. put some swear jar for me. So you're telling me when, when what's name called in some plays, the, they in the huddle they said, "What the fuck, man!" <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, bet you, I bet you they said that. I bet you they said that. Yeah, I'm like, again, you, bro. So, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Bishop. I think what I want to see this season, and I think this would bode well for the offensive line. First of all, our offensive line was really good at, as far as run blocking. We yeah. we yeah. had one of the top, if not the top, offensive line yeah. regarding run blocking. Yes, sir. I want to see them run more to the left where you can get Braxton Jones more engaged early in the game. I think That's if they up. do that, that will help him with his pass pro because now at this point, he's had a chance to impose his will upon the defensive man getting the run game established, which then mm. I think will give him a little more confidence in the pass pro because at this point now, it's a psychological thing where, hey, I've been mm. able to impose my will on this guy in the running game, now when he comes at me and, we, and I'm having to do my pass pro, I feel confident against this guy because I've had a chance to kind of feel where he's at, and now he knows that, hey, I'm no punk. So if they can get things going where they run more to the left with the use – and this is and this is why and I say this because if you watch Khalil Herbert, his best runs is when he's running to the left. Mm -hmm. if you yeah. Well, you know what? You're dipping – you're dipping right into what Olin said. Olin said, run it left every time, and every time we did, we got chunk plays. We got big yards to the left. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Left is the way to go, and I think it's going to be uh, beautiful, you know, especially with Tevin in there. On the left side, are you kidding me? Mm. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and, it, and our center has to be uh, an improvement, whoever it is. It doesn't even oh, yeah. matter, man. Mm. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. But you know, with regard matter. to Khalil Herbert, also there's a question in here in the chat. I'm looking in the chat for on um, YouTube, yeah. and Jose Sanchez asked me a question. He said, "Hey Keith, what do you think if the um, Bears trading Khalil Herbert for a fifth round pick?" I'm not against that at all because again, now once again, we need we need more draft capital. Yeah, yeah. If we could get it, great. But I'm not just giving him up because I don't think he's good because he's not great in the pass pro. Unless no. we know that we brought somebody in the building that can definitely positively replace him, then therefore you do it. But if not, or heck, for that matter, that's that that decision got to be made on draft night yeah, and whether or not you think you can get yeah. that done. That's you know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, so I, I'm more apt to want to hold on to him this season just so yeah. we can see what we can get out of what we can get out of this run game. You know, yeah. because, but my, my sleeper on the team in terms of the in that running back room, I'm a big fan of Rashawn Johnson, man. I'm telling mm -hmm. you guys, mm -hmm. pay Me attention. Too. That, yeah. I think this young man is going to have a breakout year in this it's scheme. Yeah. And I, I really believe that they're going to really have some run plays designed for him in this scheme, man. He's going to bust yep. some heads, man. And I'm yeah. here to tell you, them, them, them safeties and them corners, they don't yeah. want none of him. They don't want to, and no. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's some linebacker man that's gonna make some business decisions too. Because when that young man is coming downhill, man, he's a big back. He's, he's, he's no joke, he brother. He killed Rudy Ford he's, from the Packers. He is no oh joke. My God. <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, my oh, thing boy. is, is that you know everyone's you know stating you know maybe it's Khalil. You know we're we're looking at this run back for Khalil. What if it's for a Travis Homer? Travis Homer didn't do so well for us. Didn't really play, oh, wow. didn't play a lot of games. He didn't do anything. That's true. And you got to remember. Bye, bye, yeah. Travis. Yeah. Bye, <laughs> Travis. Travis. Yeah. Bye, Travis. Travis, Travis, came back. Travis still has value because of special teams. Now, he yeah. would be more of a, a fifth-round pick. You can get a fifth or a sixth round out of him for Travis yeah. Homer. You're not going to yeah. get more. Like, to me, I hold Cleo Herbert with more value because of the fact that he led the league in yards per carry. You know, he came into the league with, you know, this year it was down, but he still had over five yards per carry. So yeah. Cleo Herbert probably fits this scheme way better because of the fact he's going to be utilized as a wide receiver just as much as DeAndre Swift. He's going to be the guy that, that spells DeAndre Swift when he's tired. So he's going to be the fresh legs. And you got the thunder and Roshan Johnson to just bash people's heads in, you know, 20 yards from 20 yards to the end zone. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be that, that big, fresh, big back for you, you know, in those situations. So I honestly feel that Dylan, like, because I see here Dustin stated that uh, that he's, his comp is more of a Danny Woodhead. Danny Woodhead was an amazing special teams running back for the Patriots. Yeah. And you saw how he was utilizing some of those, you know, you know, with it, you know, saying he wasn't exactly the, the fastest running back, but. He got the ball in the backfield. He's very shifty. He can make a guy miss and then, you know, turn a, a three-yard play into a 15-yard play. You know what I'm saying? He gave you that little burst and, you know, excitement. He was good at He wasn't the best. He was, uh, you know, um, what, what you call it? Um, he's like a jack-of-all-trade but master of none kind of guy. That's kind of what you probably get out of Dylan. You know, I, I got, I'm looking at a couple of, of his uh, highlights right now, a little quick little highlight reel on my phone right now. And he looks more, just keep, Danny Wood is probably a very accurate um, comparison, more so than uh, Chris Rainey. So, um, you know, you, to, to your point, to, uh, is probably best, to, in my opinion. To Bishop's, to Bishop's point, though, you, you look at the, if, you know, we're looking at the receivers that we're going to get, right? You got an yeah. X, a, a Y, a Z. You got three wide receivers you got to keep accountable. That is going to keep those defenses honest, and they're not going to – they're going to be worried about pass first, run second. You guys remember when Peyton Manning had Marvin Harrison, he had Reggie Wayne, Brandon Stokely, Dallas Clark, and Jeez. then he had a plethora yeah, of running back. Anywhere from Joseph Adai all the way down – those guys were getting chunk plays because Edwin you're James, worried about James, Peyton yep. Manning dropping it into one of those receivers more before you are any of those running backs. Mm -hmm. So any one of our running backs is going to look really good this year. And, you know, all those yards that we got, the off script stuff that we got from uh, fr from Justin Fields, we're not going to worry about that because 
they're going to be worried about all these receivers and us passing the ball down the field. We're going to get our running. We're going to get our runs in. No problem, guys. We're oh, going to yeah. get those. We're going to get those yards. No problem. So I think any of these running backs that we got are going to be serviceable. I'm not worried about it. And to kind of like what Nomad says, I'm not going to beat this up any much longer. I think we should move on. I don't really see as a top 30. I don't know why they did this. I'm shooting it down. You guys can go ahead and say that you, you want them, and, and that's all fine and dandy, but I don't want to spend too much time on Dylan. You know, you know what I mean? I don't think I, he was I, worthy I, of a top 30, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not a top 30. I, I won't lie. I, my guy I was looking at, no disrespect to this guy, but I wish if they was going to do this, I wish they would have did it to my guy, Bucky Irvin. Oh, Ooh, that's, okay. that's, a, that's a guy that wow. went to my Boom. high school. He's a young guy that went to my high school. I've seen him up close. And oh, I wow. work for the kid, and, and he's a player. I've seen it up close. Wow. Um, he's, he's a player. Wow, yeah. They shouldn't sleep on homeboy. Yeah, he cold. Yeah. You know, we, we've wow. uh, we've got a little bit of extra innings in and out of uh, Bishop right now. So let's just go ahead and say our goodbyes. We're going to get get into uh, Brock Bowers. I already know how he feels about Brock. It's, it's, <laughs> it's extra. It's extra. It's extra at this point. So that, that'll be his – that I could speak for him on that, you know what I mean? But uh, hey, man, <laughs> it's, thank a, luxury, you so it's much. a luxury pick. It's, it's a luxury. luxury there pick. you go. Yeah, yeah. Instead yeah. of a necessity, it'd be a luxury. So, yeah. hey, man, thank you so much for blessing us. Can yes. you tell us really? Thank quick you, where to find Bishop. You? Thank you. Tell us where to find oh, you. Thank you, Bishop. Oh yeah, you you guys you, you guys you oh, guys can yeah. you guys can find me on um on on uh, X uh as grind to an end uh grind to the end and that's just the letter D. Uh, grind to the end and then you can also find me on you know i'm on facebook you know but catch me every day um tuesday through tuesday wednesdays and thursdays you can catch me on uh nomad network nomad live we come on at 1 p.m on uh youtube and then on on mondays and fridays we're at 3 p.m central time so check it check in with us come check us out you guys i think you guys enjoy the content those of you guys that have never had a chance to check us out but more importantly make sure you guys like and subscribe to this channel tonight and every day whenever these guys are live right here chicago sports podcast these guys are live they, they i love their content and i love chopping up with them man and once again my brothers i appreciate you guys having me on tonight you know anytime just reach out to me if i'm free i'm on okay Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank Love you. Hey, Griff, right, really brother. quick. Yes, sir. Y'all be blessed. That respect, Bishop. All right. And remember this. We're blessed to be a blessing, okay? Too, so y'all make sure y'all – and make sure you tell your loved ones tonight before you go to sleep that you love them. All right? Yes, absolutely. God bless, right. fellas. Love God bless, my friend. All right. Hey, Griff, Griff, before you take off and uh, follow Bishop on the way out, I got I got a uh, – Hit you up really quick with this next one we got. Uh, Brock Bowers. What could you tell us the pros and the cons, and whether he's not even uh, e even worth a thirty trip? You know. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He might. He. I think he might have left. Well, uh, this is awkward. Uh, where, do we go? where do we go from here? Let's go to Pinky. Let's go back up to Pinky because I, I think Pinky got cut off. Right. Oh, that's all right, man. Yeah. All right, so what was, let's repeat that question for me, my friend. Uh, just about Brock Bowers, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, and whether he's even worth a, a, a 30 visit. Um, He is absolutely worth that and some. The brother is invited to the barbecue from day one. Like, that is, that's how legit he is, all right? Like, you, the, the man is, I do not care that it's a luxury pick. Like, that's how good he is. Like, I... It's going to be borderline criminal that he's going to slip in this draft because of all the wide receiver talent. And it's like, I wish we had more draft capital this year to find a way to get him. Like, he is going to slip and it's going to suck knowing that, you know, unfortunately, a team like, I hate to say it you know, the Packers or the Steelers or something, they're going to wind up getting this brother and it's going to piss me off because he's going to be good right away. <laughs> so it's like, it's no matter what team gets him, he's, you got, you got a guy who's NFL ready right away. He's going to come in and be like Sam LaPorta on steroids. Like he is that good in my opinion. A lot of people are down on him. I am not. 
I there's I don't really have a lot a lot of bad to say about him except the fact that you know he needs to get off his blocks a little bit faster. But other than that, the brother is really good. I I it's just such that we aren't he's not on our radar like that, really. No, he's not so, especially Folks. Like, oh go ahead, buddy. Folks, talking about uh, fast, reliable transportation and getting around in the spring fling of things in Chicagoland, it's no time to be without safe and reliable transportation. Get on the road with affordable style in Chicagoland's most trusted automotive team with Budget Cars. Get rolling by calling Budget at 219-874. Just get on in there and get yourself a really nice whip and uh, check them out, guys. So, uh, yeah, man, speaking about fast, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I like Brock. I like his uh, speed as far as, you know, he's uh, 6'4". So uh, looking back at, you know, a guy like somebody like that that has about that uh, type of speed uh, and size, well, he was an inch taller, go back to the Colts again, Dallas Clark, you know. He was a, a linebacker, but he came from tight end uh you know university in Iowa yeah. um I do like Brock Bowers I do see where he could be one of those slot receivers slash seam tight ends also sit back and block and also be an H back you know in the backfield I could see where we could use him in a lot of different places I will say man if they wouldn't have went out and got that freaking tight end Everett from the Chargers. And I, I really feel like this is where I struggle, Pinky, only because we have so many necessities that I almost see like exactly where Bishop's coming from as it more of a luxury. If this was a question next year, hands down. But right now we've got, you know, two holes, one swing, and there's not a whole lot of uh, draft capital to go around. Yeah. You're already going to use one for a quarterback. You almost feel like one automatically is either going to be a receiver or an edge. Uh, very interesting to hear Bishop come off of that edge. He's been on high on that edge for a while, and now yeah. he's sw switching over to receiver. Um, and and no, rightfully so. I totally get it. But I, the, the tight end thing, I mean, man, I don't know. Maybe if he was a little bit faster, a little bit taller – that would help me out almost like if he was like a receiver type, but also a tight end. I don't know. What do you say about it, BJ? So uh, I, I think, if, I think, don't get me wrong. I think Brock is, 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 is going to be a, a beast in the pros. I really do. But I just don't think that where the bears are positioned right now in the draft and their needs. I don't think that it is, the direction that they are going yeah. to go, I think it's more formality to 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 bring them in. But I don't I don't think that there's actually a direction they're going to go unless something drastically in the draft happens. Yeah. If something just out of, unforeseen happens, then maybe. But I, I honestly think the Bears are either going to take a receiver or a defensive lineman. That, that's my take on it. At nine. Okay. It's at nine. It's at nine. It's at nine, yeah. Yeah. Yep. What yeah. what about you, Q? Yeah, you get you two guys hit around the nose, man. Um to me, Brock is he's one of the players I think is a sure not the bus. He's one of the safest players in but where the Bears sit at is I don't see tight end being where they go, man. I just can't see it. I, I can't see it because one of those receivers is gonna be there. Or, or the D is going to be there or a tackle is going to be there. I think those more important than getting a, getting a tight end, like you said, because they brung in Everett. Yep. I just don't see it. I, like you said, it's just bringing them in, get to get a feel of the kid, see, see have, what he's about. I just don't see it happening. The I only would love way that – okay, go, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm saying I would love it, you know, but I just, I just don't – I just don't see it really happening, you know. Yeah. Yeah, too many other needs. And like you yeah. said, wide receiver and wide receiver, uh lineman, and then edge rush in that order for me is what's more important. Yeah. Like if we find like if the receivers are gone and we see like a center or a tackle, like one of those big name tackles still available, we gotta take that more before we gotta yeah. jump at but, that. But here's here's the thing too, the way the draft is about to go to fold, 
the receiver's going to be there because I honestly think the first four picks going to be QB, and oh, yeah. that would oh, be yeah. great, man. Whew. Yeah, and then so the only, the only, the yeah, the only way that I foresee them getting about uh, uh, Brock if they trade back into the first round, mm. maybe, maybe. Um, well, BJ, you, do you think he? Do you think he drops? I mean, I agree yeah. with you, and I was going to no, say, no, 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 I, I don't. I don't think he drops too far. I, I mean, I think he's going to be in the top, the top fifteen. I think he's going to well, be in the top fifteen. Rookie we'll gets past to twelve. Piggyback off, to piggyback off of what BJ said, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Only because they said in two thousand eight there was eight offensive linemen picked in the first round. They said we'll either match that this year or break that record. And it, it's not even going to be by like nine, ten. It might be in in the, up to eleven teams in the first round picking offensive linemen. That is what type of deficit is in the NFL right now, and they are looking at this as a very important position to protect. The most expensive, the most important position in the NFL, their quarterback. They see that the quarterbacks at nauseum. We could talk about this. What is there? Probably ten. Decent, good, you know, QBs in the NFL. After that, it's a drop off and a crapshoot from week to week. It could change, you know what I mean? So they really are looking at this as a premium position right now until those holes get filled. So look at that. What you just said holds a lot of value, DJ, depending on who's where. And we could look at this draft and really try to dissect it and break it down. So many, you know, I think there's up to five or six QBs that are going to get picked in the first round. Early. Now you're looking at eight or more offensive linemen. That's 14 right there. Four or five wide receivers. We're already in 20 picks out of 32. Yeah. So I agree with you. If we stay, maybe if we fall back two or three, we still might get Bowers, but potentially – what would that do for us? Could we couldn't get another first round pick? So obviously we would get a second round pick, but now we're having two holes with two swings. So that might make sense. We might go get a receiver, right, boys, in the second round and pick up Bowers in the first. That would make a whole lot of sense. I would be on board with that. Would you guys? Yeah, I would. But well, I just, no, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, but but I was thinking no, more yeah. so. I was thinking more so. If they were to go after uh, Brock, they would – I mean, they would still go and get the quarterback and get their receiver in the first two picks. They would trade back into the first, meaning they would will, they will trade picks from next year to try to get back into the first round, which teams might be willing to do. Because the, the Bears have, what, 11 picks next year? Yeah. So, yep. you know, they, they have some wiggle room there. And they have a, a, a second-round pick that's not even theirs. So, so you know that's very that high is, row pick. Yeah, so I mean that's that's that that's a that that's a a good you know negotiating tool there for. Them. Yeah, I agree. About it. Yep. Yeah, I just I just honestly just. But it's got to be something they want. It's got to be something that they really think that is it, going to fit their system. It's got to be something that they feel like this is you know because you're. You're you're getting rid of you're getting rid of your future, you know, with that. Bro, what about the comparison, George Kittle? Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, that's oh, a good comparison, dude. But but, but like you said, Brandon, yeah. if they didn't bring in Everett, it would make more sense. A lot of sense. A lot of sense. But since they yeah. brought in Everett, and yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to justify here, that. And it's just case met. Here's what what what. what I will back exactly what you say, Q, because if you flip it the other way around, say we don't go get Everett, right? Okay, say we get Everett after the draft. I can get behind that instead of getting draft uh, Everett now and then getting Bowers in the draft. It's like if you flip it around, I can get that more than if we flip it back to this. It just it doesn't sit right with me. This is another This is another one where I, I'm just like I, – I, I, I'm not saying it's a waste of a draft, you know, of, of a visit of the top 30. I just think it's like what Bishop said. It's more of a luxury than a necessity. And right now we need to look at necessities. You know what I mean? So and me, for, for, 
I hate saying it, but for me, it's a pass, boys. I, yeah, I don't really see Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think they're going to bring them in. I, I the, only way, the only way, like you said, you know, like you said, Tracks, that makes sense is if we were doing a trade down yeah. and yeah. we get him and then we get we can pick up, like, you know, Xavier Worthy or something in the second with the pick that – But you never know. They might be They might be thinking that way, though. They might be thinking Bro, that we way. get some Xavier Worthy. I'm getting excited. The only excited way we do that trade ball. down is if – the only way we trade down is if, if a doomsday and neighbors yeah. is gone. If those two guys are gone, that's the only way we trade now. Yeah. Otherwise, that. they will wait and hold on to that pick and pick their guy, one of those guys that. at night. It's not yeah. – they don't – they – from what I've heard, they had they had zero – they had interest in in uh Marvin Harrison, but it wasn't as high as everyone thought it was. And you are correct on the um Caleb Williams things. Caleb Williams can't shut it down. He is shut down. He's not visiting any other teams, and the Bears are not looking at any other quarterbacks. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that, it's a done deal, man. The only other player yeah. they looked and talked to was Bo Nix, and they briefly spoke to Jaden Daniels, and that's it. They are not interested in talking to any other quarterbacks. Drake May and JJ McCarthy barely got a phone call. They barely hit. They barely around for a sip of coffee. It was it's, so both camps <laughs> shut it down. It's you might as well lock it in. Like Caleb Camp shutting it down. They're not visiting other teams, and uh, and, uh and, yeah, close yeah. And it's in the show that the Bears are having – they don't have any plans to see any other quarterbacks, mostly yeah. defensive players. And, and as so, they should, don't don't overthink it. Like, I won't say the other um, GM that we saw a few years ago overthought it, and we saw yeah. how that worked out. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, overthink it. it. I'm pretty sure they already got out the way. They didn't bullshit care. Yo, we're going to draft you. We're not – and just, you know, it is what it is, which I'm very excited yeah, about. I think, it. It, it, I think the size of the point that, you know, the, the moment that the, the yeah. whole team – all the whole the whole bus load of the staff was there at his pro day. Yeah, that's what we need to know. And, and to, to piggyback I, on what you guys said real quick, yeah. I just don't – me personally, I don't see polls passing up on that one, two, three combo with the receiver with Allen and Moore and Neighbors or, or Rome. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, I just yeah, don't that, see that, no that's passing hard. Yeah, that's, that's hard Leaf. to pass up. Oh, my God. Leaf. Can you imagine? Well, there's even other receivers that I'm salivating about later on from that dude from Tennessee and freaking – I mean, there's so, – Brian. Brian, that, Brian I mean, Thomas Jr. And, and oh, that, Thomas. And, and Brian, that's oh, yeah. Why Brian, I yeah. Can see Robinson, them, Brian Robinson or Thomas? Thompson. I can see yeah. them going – that's another reason because there's a deep receiver draft. So I can see them actually going D-line. The nine, I wouldn't mind it because it's so deep in the receiver, they can get receiver. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Trade your nine back. Get yourself a No, second. you don't have to trade. No, but no, me no. You personally, can go for the player. You don't have to trade. Me, you just go me personally, I'm staying at nine. I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I'm not trading at nine. No, Q, 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 you're not hearing what I'm saying, okay? L listen, this is what I'm saying because yeah. you already you got that third, yeah. You got that third-round pick that you could pick up that center uh, from uh, – Wisconsin out of or another offensive lineman, oh, right? Wow. In the third round, I, I really like that idea. But now look at you could force multiply this into going and still get your edge edge rusher, you know, in the first round, but trade back like BJ was saying to piggyback off what he said, go back oh, okay. to like 12, yeah. 12, yeah. 12 yeah. 15 or something like that. Then get a yeah. second round pick and take you. that second round pick and get one of those top receivers. I, and, I mean, dude, we, we would be really looking really slick. It's Make no mistake about it, boys. I do like the fact it's sexy as all get out with two top 10 picks in the draft. But, you know, polls is going to polls. And I don't really know which way it's no. going to be. But, I mean, seriously, I could see something like that. And I would get behind that. But, I mean, let's let's move on from this uh, George Kittle S tight end because it's just a little too fancy right now. And it's, it's not really a necessity. Let's get into an offensive lineman. You know, I get excited about that. I salivate. I don't even know how to say this guy's name. I'm just going to say Quran from Yale because I don't even want to uh, – oh, uh, it would yeah, be an injustice for me to try to figure out am I get to Jay or – I don't even – sorry, sorry, brother. If you're, if you're watching, but, you know, please don't hit me. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I really like this guy, man. You know, they say that he is basically a Paris uh, Johnson Jr. the second, bro. When you start talking about a guy like that, I mean – he is still – the jury's still out on him, but I really do like that uh, that that brother that came – you know, Paris Johnson Jr. He came from uh, – where did he come from? He Ohio from State. Ohio State. Yeah. Ohio State? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah right. So yeah. I really do like that. I really do like that look, you know. Um, I like his body. 
You know, I like how he kick slides. I like how he sets himself up. He's got really good balance. I like, you know, basically how he likes to dip and he get his shoulders in before contact. Um, I really like just his, his very, uh, for me, at looking at him as far as an offensive lineman goes, I like how big he is, how long he is, but he's also got really good footwork. And that's what stands out for me. And I think we really need somebody like that. Um, and I do think for me, I'm going to tell you right now, I think he's very well worth a top 30. What do you say, Leroy? Absolutely. And the fact, and, and look, and the best thing about it, he's an Ivy League guy. A lot of the Ivy League wow. linemen that have been in the league, they tend to last minimum 10 years. They don't, that means he's going to come in cerebrally. He's going to understand the playbook. He's going to digest everything very quickly. So he may, you know, he, what he lacks in athleticism, he makes up with intelligence and, you know, with his hand placement and his foot placement. And the one thing I like about him from what I've seen from the highlights, he has an anchor. Love hey. He can anchor. Yeah. Now is he, the only thing he got to work on is just getting strong. He got to get strong when it comes to pass protection, you know, mobility wise. Like he just got to give him more, more, more hip, you know, more hip, you know, saying more hip movement. If he works on his hip placement, he won't look so out of balance sometimes with the speed rushers. Other than that, he is worth it. He's definitely, yeah. definitely worth a top 30 visit. Hands down. Hey, really quick, guys. Really quick. Papa Bear's in the building. Bruce. Oh, oh. hey, what's up, Bruce? Hey. What's up, Pops? <laughs> Your son is cooking today with his takes today. Cooking. Today. Yeah, man. He's 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 letting loose, man. This is I think this is probably his best show yet, man. Yeah, because he ain't worried about really the pockets good. of the bears this time. <laughs> 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 we love you, BJ, bro. We love you, man. <laughs> yeah. What do you got to say, BJ? What do you got to say about uh, about this guy, man? This this big monster, uh, Karan. Do you think he he was worth a look or? He's six five, three hundred and twenty six pounds. That's all I got to say. Six five, <laughs> three hundred and twenty six pounds. Yes. There's nothing yeah. more to say. Nothing more to yeah. say. Yeah. That's the like. That's a that. mammoth of a man. Yes. I, I yep. mean, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's, I mean, I if like anything, it. his size is, is, is just it gives him an automatic invite. Automatic. <laughs> and some, sometimes you just got to keep it simple, boys. I, hey, I like it. Hey, I, I like it. I can get behind that. Q, what do you say, bro? Oh, yeah, I like just like what um Pinky said, man. Well, I'm, that he's a uh, Ivy League student, and linemen already are the smartest ones on the field. Point blank, period. So him going to Ivy League, um, and I trust Pose, man. So Pose knows how to. He's a lineman himself, so he knows what to look for, the, the traits of a good lineman. And I'm pretty sure he dominated the, those Ivy League schools. So you know, um, it's definitely look like it's worth a thirty pick. Smartest guys, it, smartest guys on the field. Q, here you go, bro. This is me giving <laughs> you. Is that a hug? Was that a hug? Was that a virtual hug? Yeah, yeah, no one knows that. If you keep it 100, old line is the smartest, own smartest. No on the lies field. detected, Q. No lies detected. But by yeah, far, they are the smartest that. ones on the field. Yeah. By far, they gotta be. They got. They. I tell you what, when we get to them blocking, we got some of the best seats in the building, boys. We get to watch the whole play down the field, man. It's <laughs> great, yeah, man. But 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 here's my real take. Here's my real take. I think yes, he's 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 worthy of a a thirty pick, but. I honestly don't think the Bears are going to go O line in the first round. Uh, I don't think so. They, I, I don't think he's so. in the top three. Means I, I, because, because I know it's a want. I know a lot of people want it, but I don't think it's a need. I don't think it's a need. But I is that the round that he's going in? Is is he projected first round, Pinky? No, he's projected a uh, high. He's like middle, like very high. You know, I want to say like. The between nine to twenty second in the second round is where he's jumped up to. Second he's put up, up as a high third rounder, but like they said, his pro if, day. If he's there at three, sure, sure. If okay. he's there at three, yeah, sure. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, I think he did uh like what was it six more reps on the bench press on his pro day, and he just lit up. I think he lit up like three dudes, 
Like mm. it was some, it's some highlight worthy stuff for his pro day. Like I mean, he had just one dude that was standing in the bag, and he he took him like five he took him like five <laughs> yards further, just tossed him aside like he was nothing. Like really, really quick. Hey, I don't know if Bruce is still listening, but Bruce Senior, if you're listening, please talk to the powers that be. I want two name changes in this NFL draft. I would like Chop Robinson to go by his first name on his jersey so that way when we pick up the jersey, it could say Chop because I think that'd be really cool. The other thing is <laughs> it's this guy, this guy's name. All right, hold on. Let me let me cut and paste this name because I don't even want to try to spell it. We only got so much time on this podcast, guys. <laughs> Look at this, boys. Look at this. This is going to be a very expensive jersey. Look at how many <laughs> letters is there, bro. I, I, think, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about, too. Bro. Bro, look at this. So many vowels. <laughs> look at that, guys. If you could get that worked out for us, Bruce, we would love you for that, man. I, I know that's <laughs> I don't know if it's a tall ask, but let's just work on chop for one. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd love to see some chop, bro. I'd love me some oh. chop. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, cool. so, so is that unanimous? Uh, is is everybody on oh, yeah. board? Definitely unanimous. You on board unanimous. With it? You good with it? Yeah, I'm definitely good with him even the top 30. Okay, let's let's move on down to uh, center. Zach uh, Frazier out of uh, – University of, of uh, West Virginia. Uh, what do you guys got to say about this guy? Was he worth a top 30 visit? Honestly, no. I would have I would have taken the kid from Wisconsin over him, honestly. Um, I agree. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I, I still view him as like a top 40, maybe top 50 player. But I just, I saw the, the, the center from Wisconsin. I, I had him graded out higher. I agree with the comp that the A.J. Shipley – Cup, but like I said, he, you know, saying maybe they looking at him because you know, saying they they know the kid from Wisconsin is probably going to be gone before they can get to him. So maybe they're they're probably looking at him as maybe that you know high third round pick. Maybe I just, but honestly, don't think he was top thirty. I don't think he was worth the top thirty in my opinion. Great kid, though. I like his I like his game. I just don't, you know, saying the kid from Wisconsin seems stronger, better foot place, you know, better foot placement better awareness out there in the field and he played at a tougher, you know, he played a tougher conference and tougher defenses. So where, where is he projected though, Pinky? Maybe that's why they said, you know, uh, when they go look at these guys, it, it's all with according to where they're he's, potentially. Oh. He's rated as like the second center coming off the board. Oh, so really? Like, so he's really? They got him rated, but they got him as, you know, in a lot of the uh, comps out there, he's rated as, as the second highest center coming off the well, board. Maybe. Third, third round, second round, third round. Yeah, like a third round guy. So okay. like late second, third round, early third. I just you know the you know. I just I just got one thing really quick to say, boys, that I don't like. I don't want to see my my center get tossed aside. No, I was just I about to say that. that. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Or, or <laughs> we don't want our center, sorry, I didn't mean we don't want our center thunder. blocking our own linemen. And, and this, yes. but this part, like the pick off of Brandon. Oh. Even when he has good hand placement, they're still both they still doing what they want to do with him. Uh, yeah, I'll pass on that. I'm sorry. I'll pass. Yep. Yeah, that, 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 that was part of, like I said, you know, saying the kid from Wisconsin, ain't nobody punking him. Like it's, 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 it's just, you just you just look at him. He takes his helmet off. You like that's cool. is, how how light in the ass do you have to be to get tossed around when your hand <laughs> placement is correct? Yeah, that's, that's unheard of. Yeah. Hey, look what Dustin Jones just said though. Broke his leg at the end of the last game and dragged his ass off the field because his team didn't have a timeout gamer. I thought that's pretty legit. I thought that's cool. But hey, don't get ho checked and get tossed around like a little rag doll, okay? I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. Man. I appreciate the, the broken leg and all that, but let's save it for the game, baby. Not when your leg gets broke, okay? Yeah. Yeah. BJ, yeah. what do you got to say, bro? Uh mm. Nah, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't blame you. Don't <laughs> say, they want to say you like, like you. You saw some of the tape, bro. Like you know. Nah, no. Yeah. I mean, 
BJ's tough on uh, us off le- offensive linemen. First things first, he ain't going to waste the first round draft pick. He might not Hell even no. waste the second Hell round no. draft pick on us offensive no. linemen. No, I wouldn't. No, no. See, look at it. But not, I got to disagree no, with you, bro. No, I, 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 I think that back. With tackles, yes. But okay. Not with interior oh, linemen, yeah. I would not. Okay. With All tackles, right, I here. would. I'll, I'll, I'll with tackles, I would. Man. If you get but, like but, a Zach Martin, Zach Martin type, that's that's different. Okay, yeah, well, I was gonna say. So but, 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 but nobody knew Zach Martin was gonna be Zach Martin until once he got. I did. Yeah, he, yes, they did. I did. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> he no, was he was a beast. He was a man child. child. Like, yeah. Hey, I like this. I like what Ten Bear said. Uh, no more cupcakes. I already got one. For, for all those that don't know Ten Bears, he just started on uh, on uh, Nomad. He's he's great, man. You guys go check him out. He just started. I the, he, I, I like some of his takes too, man. He's very very yes, quick witted. So, um, yeah. What about what about you, Q? Well, with the hold up, with the, the kid you're talking center. about right now, the center, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I said, um, yeah, no. Nah, I can't have a guy getting tossed around like that. You know, that's just. So that's a for sure. No, that's that's not yeah, that's, like yeah. something that you overlook. Good hand placement. Not a still concert. getting bullied. Nah. We good. We good. We good on him. We good on him. Yeah. I don't like I said. I think they only the only reason why they the only reason why they even gave him a visit is because they knew the kid from Wisconsin wasn't going to be available. Literally, the hey, only reason. Ask me the question again. Hey, like hey, it. BJ, close your eyes, bro. I'm about to read something that your your dad just said. You might not want to. He said, "Sorry, had to make a cocktail run." Ask me that question again. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's getting lost in the sauce. <laughs> oh, hey, you got to invite us next time. We, uh, we got you there. <laughs> I, I don't know him that well, but I don't think he gets he gets uh, lit. But uh, no, Bruce, really quickly, all we were asking is that there's some names out there that we're struggling with. <laughs> and what, right here, if we could just switch the jersey name to the first name instead of that name, that would be <laughs> great. That would be great. That and Chop Robinson, if we could have his first name on the back of his jersey, if you could uh, – I don't know if that's a big ask, but uh, – it would be really cool to have Chop's name on the <laughs> back of a jersey. I, you know, the more I say this, the more ridiculous it sounds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Trax, get out of the room, bro. You're coming with some weak stuff. We got further more important stuff to talk about, you know. Um, no, but uh, uh, 50 in the building. Hey, guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, oh, smash yeah. that notification bell. Y'all know what to do, man. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Tell everybody about us and follow all of our uh, content, man. Have, so, hey, for you guys, so, oh, Bruce, Bruce agrees. He said Chop sounds cool. All right, all right, man. So he might, he might uh, get something happening, guys. Yeah. Um, you heard it first on Chicago Sports Podcast, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> hey, really quick though. So let's go ahead and move on from this guy and let's move on to. Uh, Dallas Turner. I know you guys are excited like to talk about I like him. Dallas Turner. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. Dallas Turner. yes, sir. Yes. Hey, go go ahead, go ahead. Uh, let's switch it up a little bit, Q. Yeah. Let's go ahead and let you uh, lead off with this, man. What do you yeah. got to say about uh, Dallas Turner? Complete beast, man. Complete beast, and I would, I would love if he if if he went with the um. That's another one I could see them going at nine. You know, I could see them getting at nine if. Somehow the receivers are off the board. I can him on the edge on the side. Thank of the you, receiver. Bruce. Oh Thank my God, I can. I love. I love this guy. I love this guy, you, man. Now, now let me ask you a question, Q. Um, I, I I forget your background. It's hard to keep up with everybody. What do you think about this guy? He's in a three-four scheme. Do you think that he could play out of that? Into the four three, you think that yeah, that'll be all right? Yeah. If they get to him early, you know they can get to him early, get him in there. Yeah, of course. Okay. Because yeah, when these rookies, they can be molded into this stuff, you know. Okay. So they don't have to, you know. Some players say he's not a fit. He can actually be molded. Some guys have actually been. They switched over to four three once they got into the league. There's a couple of, couple of, couple of examples of that. You know, we've seen it before. So if he's a baller, he can definitely do it. Definitely do it. And I think they would do if they're bringing him in for top 30. 
Yeah, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I like how uh, he can drop into into coverage. I, I do like that. I mean, you look at that with uh, zone blitzes and whatnot. You know, you you would go ahead and have your defensive linemen sag back and your linebackers come in. I could see him coming into something like that. I think that would be special. I, I do like the fact that he has that that uh, long uh, arm length. They look at that. If you pay attention to the other linebackers that we put on our team, there's something about that physicality with the uh, the long arm length that the Bears are really looking into. Um, I do like the fact that um, earlier in his career he had trouble uh, getting off the blocks, but then he got much stronger as as his uh, you know his um, the the years went on, you know the time went on. So I think you know along with his uh, his speed and all of that, I think he's a very exciting person to look at um i i don't know a whole lot of cons about him uh they do say his uh comparison is josh allen which is very impressive man i, I do like that that's a that's a good solid name so what about you bj what do you got to say about this guy man so i mean i don't i don't really have anything negative to say i i think i think it's a a, a realistic possibility that he could be there at nine i mean that he would be the pick at nine like i said earlier i think it's either receiver or defensive line and he is right there at the top of who they should pick if it's a defensive line you know um, wow. I, I i i don't i don't think that i don't think that if they did pick him it would be a setback i think that he would actually improve the defensive line yeah i think he would he will instantly give the defensive line added improvement and, and okay know, I, I don't i don't think i don't think it'll be a i don't think it'll be a long waiting curve for our learning curve for him to adapt to the to the nfl yeah. i yeah. think yeah. that he he would be able to plug in and, and he he could attack right away friends you want to talk about a learning curve when i really wanted to get into and have a little bit of fun online no, I didn't get on farmersonly.com. Quick, quick, quick go on there, Pinky. Quick go on there, Pinky. No, what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is underdog fantasy, bro. Underdog fantasy. Get your mind out of the gutter. Come on, man. Just because I look like a farmer don't mean I'm about that life. You know? Get in the action and get in the money and get in an Omega fund, man. I tell you what, I hit it. I dropped it like it's hot. I threw a couple bucks down because, you know, daddy's cheap. But I came out <laughs> victorious, man. I got some money, man. I got some cold cash. Bro, number one fantasy sports app, not just here in Chicagoland, but in the nation. And they are our sponsor. Underdog Fantasy. Get five picks right and mega bank your money by 20 times. Enter the promo code of CSP. That Chicago Sports Podcast CSP are our initials, and they will match you up to a hundred bucks. That's right, boys. A hundred bucks, man. You you basically you, you got a warranty there, man. Place your entry today at underdogfantasy.com. All right. So let's get back into it, man. I, I really like this. I want to say that it's it's uh Basically, boys, this is a, a golden ticket. I, I think we're going to go ahead and say he's worthy of a top 30. Pinky, you like him too, right? Hell yeah. And the one thing <laughs> I, I need to I need to get this out here because I know it's part of the, the cons that he has. People have to understand he was he was tasked with being being told to be more of a read and react and not attack under the Nick Saban defense <laughs> on his side of the ball. One of the cons that they have for him is that he was too finesse and that he wasn't veracity, he didn't have enough veracity. He was not told to be that way. But when he was when he, when but if you notice when he was told to blitz, the tackle had had no shot, no shot of stopping him when he was told to blitz. Wow, but he wasn't told to blitz a lot in the scheme that they ran at Alabama. He was not told to he was told to cover tight ends. And so wow. that's the running backs. So he was in coverage yeah. more than he was out there, you know, blitzing. He was there for more coverage and run stopping. He wasn't tasked that he wasn't tasked to, to blitz a lot. So you didn't get to see what he can really do. <laughs> Only sparingly, you got to see him blitz because 
look, ask what ask ask um ask Michigan if if they wanted him to keep blitzing. Pinky, <laughs> Pinky, uh, somebody's piggybacking off of what you said. They said it earlier. You might not have seen it. Ten Bears from Nomad. He yep. said, uh, "This is a great, great." Uh, you know, t- chime in really quick. He says, Dallas Turner is the truth. Let him stand up and move around. Bama mm-hmm. is the only team that you can co-sign. He says he can put on weight and Washington will make him an all pro. I mean, that's a pretty thick endorsement right there. Um, not saying that that he's not far off, but, you know, up to Dustin's point, Khalil Mack did it, but he's, you know, generational talent. I, I, I do think that if we had a, a person – that could help him morph into this, it would be Washington. You know what I'm saying? So I do like what you're saying, Pinky. It, it's it's a solid one for me. I want to go ahead and uh, if you guys don't mind, I really want to get into Chop Robinson, man. I'm really oh, excited yeah. about this. Guy. Yeah. You guys don't mind. Let's get into it, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. my gosh, bro. I mean, there's got to be a better comparison, Josh Uchi or Uchi Walla or whatever the heck this is. <laughs> Josh Uchi, I don't even know who the heck that is, bro. But uh, I don't agree with that count. No, nope, I don't. Who who do you who do you agree with them about? You know what 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 would you like to say? Chop is. Let's go ahead and let you uh, lead off. For me, if I'm if I'm giving him a comp because of his length and athleticism, I I see him as like a Javon Curse. Javon Curse is what I if 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 you watch the way he uses oh, wow. his hands, the way he uses he's like a slower version, like because he doesn't have like the um that freakish first get off, you know, the quickest yeah. that, that Curse had, but his arms, those legs, the range, the way he moves, I see a lot of Javon Curse in him. Like he uses his hands very well. Like you see, he he gets that extension, he puts that paw out there, he get a hold of you, you're going down. Like you don't get away from him when he puts his hands when he gets his hands. Pinky, up. Pinky, who's that guy out of? Uh, for some reason, his name is escaping me. Help me out. Yeah, Dallas. That P- Parsons, right? Yeah, Parsons. Yeah, Parsons. Parsons. That's Parsons. that Parsons. is the comparison. I heard a, a poor man's version or a cheaper version. They went to the same school. They went to the same school. school. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. They're both yeah. Big guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mike and yeah, Michael I mean, on his podcast was talking him up too, talking about that's his boy. You know, so that's- I like that first step explosion that he's got, the elex- a- a- acceleration. I think it's really uh, great when you have somebody with that speed and strength together. And those, uh, you know, I-, I like how he has like the short strides for explosion. I yeah. like all that. I-, I want a guy to have that. And I really think that. You've got to have those short strides because you don't want to oversell yourself. You want to be able to be balanced. Not only do you want explosion, but you also want to be able to kind of like tame that down a little bit in case it goes laterally on you, left or right. You don't want to over pursue. Over pursue to get you in a lot of trouble. I think that's smart. I love this guy. I'm going to give you my top 30 right now, but let's talk about him to exhaustion. I love this dude, man. <laughs> uh, so, he's a top 10, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah if he, he, he he falls, if is, we yeah. decide to go yeah. defense and he and that's who we pick, home run. It's a home run. That's- yeah, I was I was going to bring that up, but I'm glad you brought it up, Brandon, because um, I like his Uh-oh. first. It's just, oh, he's off the ball. His power off the ball is, is, is fantastic. Now I was thinking if the Bears were to trade back, Uh-oh. I think it's a great possibility that uh, he would be right there for them. If if whoever they whoever they looking for the initially was off the board, I can absolutely see them trading back a few spots to grab him, and that'll be perfect right there, man. That'll be perfect. Wow. Okay. Okay. I can see that. I was gonna bring that up earlier, but I'm glad you brought that up. Brought his name up. I can see. Where I can see that happening? Don't trade where, him back. Where about? Where about at would you see that happen? Where the, the trade back? Yeah, I mean where where would you at be nine. comfortable with that? From from nine to like 14, 13, around that area, okay. not too far back. I think I don't see him making it past the twenties. I can see him in the teens. Yeah, I think he's between fifteen and twenty. I think he's between yeah. fifteen and twenty. Okay, fifteen and twenty. Here's the thing that gets me the most, boys. And and I, I don't I don't want to spend too much time on it, but when you've got somebody that's like chomping at at, at your, you know, on your, 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 they're right up on your heels, right? 
boys, I, I don't want to leave anything left unturned when it comes to the Vikings. I don't exactly want to focus so much on them that we're not doing what we do best, but I don't want to leave anything that they might empower themselves by because I make no mistake about it. We are still above and beyond uh, the Vikings, right? So we don't want to lose any pole position with them. I do think that we are moving into the right direction about taking the North and never giving it back. I think we're starting to make our way into, you know, and passing up the Packers. We actually have to beat them Hopefully. in order to, yeah. for us to say that, you know. Yeah. But if yeah. we can do that, that'll really help. And I don't think we're that far behind Detroit because we've already proven we can beat Detroit, boys. We should you know have beat Detroit saying? twice last year. So I so, agree with you. Know, you. So it, preach, bro. You know, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think Detroit was better than us. So I, we, I think. I, I think they showed glimpses. You know, they 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 they, they played some great games and then they played some bad games. So there's the Facebook user posted that verse before chop. I do yeah, agree. Yeah, with I, I do agree with that. Yep. Verse, I agree with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but the reason why the Bears didn't bring they did bring they did talk with him. They did have meetings with him. The only reason why he wasn't listed in the top thirty is because he's going to be gone. Yep. <laughs> he's going to have a shot at him. That's, that's yeah. the only he's reason why nine, you got he, he is going. He is not touching nine at all. He's yeah. gone. He is going to be gone. That is the only reason why he wasn't necessarily even brought up, and why Chop is more of an option. Now, yeah. I get what everyone's saying. You know, um, no bad. And the guys are you know putting the chat that you know he's a little lightning, you know, a little lightning ass. You know, what I'm saying lighten the cakes as they would say. Um, you know, but he can put on the weight. Eric Washington is known like he did that with Oliver. It, with the bill, like Oliver, you know, uh, I think I can't, can't get his first name, but I remember his name was Oliver. He was a D tackle. He was undersized. Was considered and, soft. Yeah, he's from Houston. He went to Houston. Yeah, yeah. And, he was considered. And, and he was considered on the softer side. Wasn't aggressive. He get to Buffalo. Wasn't nobody saying that he was soft. Wasn't nobody calling that man soft. His first two plays in the NFL. Then he came yeah. out there with some business. He made. I mean, it was mm, nobody calling that man soft after that. Once Eric get a hold of somebody. You you either gonna be you either gonna be that dude or you ain't playing. Period. We saw yeah, him do that for the Bears before with a lot of guys that didn't seem like they we should have drafted him and they looking like beasts. They go to some other teams and they like, well, who is this guy? Hmm. Eric Washington will get the best out of whoever comes on that line. I can promise you that. Chop will get beefed up. He will put his hand in the dirt and he gonna be out there getting it. real. No, granted, Dallas is probably Dallas and Verse are better. But verse, he gone. Like <laughs> he, he gone. He six or seventh or eight, six seven or eight, he gone. One of those teams taking him. He he is absolutely he falls to us. I so let, let me I was just about to ask you that. So if he's there at nine, do the Bears pull the trigger? Even if first? The, even even if one of the receivers is there. No, we gotta have, we gotta Ooh, be first. That's tough. That's as tough. much as I love, that's like really I said, tough. we can get another if we can oh man. If if he's there at nine, if verse is still there at nine, though. That's that's a very hard. Yeah, that's hard. That'd be way that's too hard, hard to pass up. That's way hard. too hard because his comps are he's he's got comps of, uh, you know, you got people saying Khalil and Nick Bosa as his comps. You can't pass that up. No. No way. No. No, no you way. can't. And and you know what? You also need the fact remains is sweat's gonna get doubled. But if you can make somebody else. Sweat on the other side of the ball, mm, yes. you're in trouble, man. And if you can learn from sweat at an early age, I mean, he ain't get he's not old, but he ain't getting any younger. So you yeah. definitely want to take some pressure off that. If sweat goes down, boys, we do have some backup, but it's not deep. So we would be in trouble. I yeah. think this is something that we really need to address. I think it's ultra important. Yeah. I think it is a very, very important need. I wouldn't mind. Looking at that, I definitely think it's not one of those things where you look at Bowers at nine and you say, oh, well, I can kind of make this work and try to fit it into, you know, um, my mindset to, to make it happen. I really could see this being way more of a need than getting your third tight end or something. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I, I definitely see this as a priority. Priority number one, I mean – especially if you look at it this way. Make no mistake about it, at some point, even though I couldn't stand Rodgers, I couldn't stand the Packers, 
I do understand why he wanted to get some help on that side of the ball, and he always complained that he did not get a receiver. But what they did with that defense, they built something over there, boys. And you want to talk about the best way to take – pressure off of a quarterback is to make that field shorter. And that's what you do when you get this top defense that we're building right now. You take the pressure instead of going 80. And, you know, it also helps that you're going to improve your your special teams, right, Q? But if you can do all of that, it takes pressure off of your quarterback. I think it's important. I do see if he's available, if versus available at nine, let's go ahead and get it. Something that did kind of uh, sit right with me, and I do kind of understand it. Dustin said he thinks that Chop could fall into the 20s. If Chop does keep falling, do you take nine? And if Verse is already gone, you go ahead and drop back into the 20s because now you you would know that, though. You would know that once you get, because once you, how would you know that? Because at nine, you would have to make that decision before nine. To trade that pick, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. If, if Versa is gone, Chop isn't. That means, like, if let's say, like, if Dallas Turner and Versa are are both uh, gone, yeah, Chop falling. <clears throat> that means Chop is falling. So that what okay. one of those three guys are going to fall because those other teams don't need defense within the tweens. You're going to the only t- teams that need defensive players are in the twenties. Because See, the Bears, the Bears did the, themselves a disservice by not getting a defensive end in the uh, free agency. Oh, they didn't they said, you can still get a guy. We can trade down and get a guy with with a second round pick. If we if we happen to trade, if the team from the twenties needs a guy that bad to trade from the nines to get to you know move up from twenty one or something all the way up to nine, we're gonna wind up with enough picks to build that defense depth in the second round and with the twentieth pick. We can still get chop, get another a receiver with a second rounder to make possibly another second round pick out of that right away, or two thirds, and get a you know a plethora of other defensive tackles and another um, edge rusher. There's plenty of edge rushers, but those are the top three big names. And yeah, yes, maybe. more than likely, we'll like see. if if the combination of let's say Dallas and Chop go, verse might fall to like maybe 14, so we can maybe trade back. Let these other teams who are looking for <laughs> looking for like you know receivers or something or linemen, and we can get them at like thirteen or fourteen. Get versus at 13, 14. You know, bro. Oh, why are you covering up LeBron's hairline like that, dude? <laughs> hey, you want to talk about people throwing around <laughs> the word generational too much? This comment right here is generational, boys. I think if Turner is still there at nine. He's gone like LeBron's hairline. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Ain't uh, no lies detected, bro. That <laughs> that the hairline look, Stephen A. Smith hairline looking better than he is right now. That's you know how that's, <laughs> that's, that's a that's a little far fetched now. Stephen hairline look, is look. all the way up here. It is all the way up here. Hey, LeBron ain't that far behind, man. You see, I can tell a spray on, bro. He sprayed on them waves, bro. Them that <laughs> line is done, bro. All bad. right, so so we all agree that Chop is definitely worth a thirty visit, oh, yeah. especially. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Without, a yeah. yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Let's get into the defensive backs. I think someone said Nomad is in the building, and I know he's very high on defensive backs. He was a defensive back, so uh, I'm sure he's salivating just hearing this uh, from <laughs> Auburn. Uh, Nehemiah Pritchett. What do you guys think about Nehemiah Pritchett out of Auburn? Do you guys think he was worth a top 30 visit? What, what's your pros and cons about this guy? What do you say, Q? Yeah, I think he's worth a top 30 visit. You know, he's got the good speed. I just, you know, want him to work on his tackling, you know. But other than that, I think he's, you know, you could always have a corner in. Corner is very, very essential in the NFL, man. So I think he's definitely a top 30 <laughs> Definitely. Sorry. The hairline joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the cons. The tackling, you know, it's already it's the NFL is full of bad tackling as it is right now. So he'll fit right DBs in. DBs can't that. tackle. He'll fit right in. DBs can't tackle. Yeah, so he'll fit right in. So I think yeah, it's pretty. I like the kid from what I saw. I like the kid. Where does anybody know where he's projected? Where he's supposed to go? 
second round, second, third round kind of guy. Really? Guy. Wow. Okay. I okay. I don't agree with it though. I don't I don't he he not my cup of tea. I'm sorry. And I see and reasons because of one of the cons and the things that you saw on the tape. He, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's average in man coverage, but he sucked at speed. Any any receiver that has speed, he was getting dusted. And I'm sorry, you pretty much every receiver that we that he's gonna be facing in the NFC North got speed. Watson, um, Reed for the Packers, and then you got Addison with the Vikings, and then you got or um Amin Rob from with the Browns. Bro, you're gonna get roasted. They're gonna put them dudes on you. You it's a wrap. I ain't trying he to reminds me of Kildor. They used to play for the Bears. Oh, Vildor? Vildor. Vildor, whatever. Oh, his name you mean the dude that went to the Lions and got torched? <laughs> the reason why they not why they lost they, dude, in they that championship game. Him. They, they just him resigned back him. Vildor. <laughs> I don't know how he keeps on getting resigned, man. They brought him I, back. I don't think he I don't think he deserves he shouldn't be out there on the edges. I think he should be at, out in the middle. I think that's like a nickel, where, like a nickel. Yeah. He's a yeah, nickel, yeah. Whatever, but you got to yeah. play on the outside for whatever goddamn. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's he's uh he should be on an island or anything like that. But you know this guy right here, um, when you hear of pro, of 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 cons and one of the things that they say is uh balance in his back pedal can be an issue, oh. dude. Chris oh. Conti, that, 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 trouble, that, 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 bro. That, 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 that oh. reminds me of Chris Conti. <laughs> No, hey. Chris Conti. Chris no. Conti. Oh. Hey, let's bump this guy, man. I'm just gonna say right now, no. I'm just gonna no, say it right bro. now. Oh, he, he was a no when I saw the name. When I saw, I saw the name, I was like, nah, that's a no for me. We got another defensive back in the building. I love the first name, Elijah. Elijah Jones, BCU. What do you guys got to say about Elijah? He gotta get bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I like his game. He's, he's just got to get big. He, he yeah, too he's, he's too light. He, he, he's light. He, he's yeah. way too small and slender. He gets bounced around. You know, he, he gets – when he tries to do man coverage, he gets he gets beat <laughs> up. Chris he gets beat up. And he's not afraid to make the business decision tackles, but you can see that he get drugged. You know what I'm saying? He's not afraid to make the tackles, but he be getting beat up out there. So If this you know, is true, which I believe it to be because it makes more sense than it does. It does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you Absolutely. know, uh, they, they use some of the 30 visits for – UDFA opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's yeah, standard. Absolutely. It's standard, but yeah, I, I I wish they would just use it. You know, I mean, I would prefer that they use that that uh the thirty the top thirty visit for top thirty <laughs> players. You know, but you know what I'm saying. But I get why they do it that way. But you know what I'm saying. They can always visit the other guys who they think are gonna be undrafted. You know what I'm saying. But. Yeah. Hey, special shout out. We got 80 in the building, man. I'm looking at a lot of these guys that are in the chat. The chat's on fire, man. You got some no maniacs, no maniacs out there, man. We appreciate you guys coming in here and, and hanging out with us. Uh, Mr. Mayhem, 69, Turbo Duran, Bruja, 7. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Dustin Jones, one of our very own uh, 10 Bears. Uh, man, i tell you what, man. Thank you guys uh, so much for uh, spending this evening with us. Uh, let's just get back into this Elijah Jones uh, really quick. The only reason why I say I like that first name is because that's my nephew's name. So I don't know a whole lot. I don't know a whole lot about this guy, but uh, you know, it, it, if he's too small and light in the loafers, I think this is a, a hard pass for me, yeah. boys. You know, he probably an undrafted guy. We pick up, give a you know, give him a shot. You know, I mean, him, yeah. Honestly, the Bears. I don't think I'm really looking at um, DBs unless it's a safety. You know, maybe safety help, but I, I, I think we're I think we're pretty solid at the cornerback. So I mean, I, I think this is more you know formality. Maybe thinking about you know extra extra body at training camp or something. You know, yeah. something like that. So yeah, but I don't think here's it's a serious. Here's an interesting one right here. Uh, Robert Rochelle. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> His comp. <laughs> Cam Hart, Notre Dame. What do you guys got to say about this guy from Notre Dame, guys? Love Notre Dame. Yeah. Cam Hart, Notre Dame. What do you guys yeah. got to say about this? Uh, I love the comp. 
I love the comp of Trey Flowers. Okay. Yeah, yeah I like Trey Flowers too, man. That's that's a good that comparison. That is the most accurate comp out here for a player that that came in for the top thirty. The size, the hands, his foot placement, the way you know the way he moves his game. It he looks literally like a almost a carbon copy of Trey Flowers. He is, is there like a is there like a defensive back that we're gonna push over to safety or something? I almost got like this feel like something's about to happen and we're breaking open like a spot for a guy to fall into. Like, is that potentially what we're looking at? Is there have you guys heard anything that's in the works of mm. because I, I don't really understand what's going on here? Like they're obviously a focus at defensive and, and make no mistake about it, I do agree with the UDFA. Uh, and all that kind of stuff that we could be potentially bringing some guys on to kick the wheels and whatever. And I, I get all that, but is, is there something going on where we're backing up the, the safeties with a guy that we already have? That's a good defensive back. Is there somebody on our Terrell team that, Smith is the only one yeah, who has, Smith? who has safety experience in both spots from when he, when he played in college. He's already on the team. Yeah. He's already yeah, he's on our team, but I'm saying he's the only one who has the versatility because he's played, all four corner. He's played all DB positions. You know, he's played the slot. He's played, you know, out, you know, the main corner spot. He's played free and strong safety in college. So he's the only one with the most experience out of the young group of guys who can be put in that position to go and play strong or free safety. Cause he even did it a little bit here for us, for us, you know, he played a couple of games, for, you know, played a couple of snaps for Brisker and for um Eddie, Eddie Jackson. So he has experience so he might be someone that we might be testing out to be, you know, the incumbent behind Kevin Byard. Maybe they have him learn behind him, another pros pro kind of guy, teach him some things, and then he gets more seasoning and then he becomes the, the new safety tandem with Brisket. I can see that happening. They get him on the field just because he's really good at taking the ball away. He's really good out there on the field. So Yeah, and, I mean, and, what a- and I, I also think – the reason why they probably bringing in these these DBs, you got to think that Ibrahim is a defensive minded coach, so maybe he's just trying to to see what's out there, seeing if it's something that he could try to put together. You know, yeah, I, I don't think it's anything, you know, formal like this is who we're thinking about going out there, but just to see what's out there, see what what what. If it's anything that they could possibly put together. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, boys, but if this is only 12 guys of the 30, that doesn't mean that the next 18 are as important or equally or more important as the first 12 that they look at. Let's let's not get it twisted. Just because they've already looked at 12, maybe just because of the schedule and the way things fell into place. That, that that could be it. So let's not overemphasize that this first 12 is the most important. Not not saying that some of these, you know, like the verse one is obviously really important, okay, that, you know, in, in that uh, a couple other guys that we looked at, you know, uh, Karan from Yale, I really like him. You know, um, Brock, not so much, obviously, but the two receivers, Malik and uh, Rome, you know, um, obviously Caleb, but you know, I these guys right here, obviously, it's Dallas Turner, obviously, instant impact and positional needs that we have. But there's 18 more guys that yeah. you know they're going to look into. So, I mean, what do you guys say about that? Who else do you think they're they're going to go after? Is there any other names that are being thrown around for the 30? Um, Xavier Worthy is one. Uh, okay, but uh, the, the, just a quick, just a quick uh little side note. Roma Dunze turned down three other uh, top 30, 30 visits to make sure he came to Chicago first. You got to be kidding me! Yeah, he, he wanted. When to he said he wa- he he wants to come to Chicago. There's a good chance he's going made to be it yeah, wants- to the Bears. He wants to be picked by the Bears. He turned. Yeah. He rescheduled other other top thirty visits to make sure he went to Chicago first. Because he wants is that the Caleb. is that the guy that loves uh uh Hester and uh yes to pattern his from game Washington. off of Hester? From, yes from, from Washington, Washington wide receiver yeah. out of Washington yeah. yes that is that's him that's him okay yeah he turned out he turned uh he was supposed to have, he was supposed to have visited with the Raiders Atlanta and um uh the Chargers first and he he told gotcha. them that he rescheduled all three to come to Chicago first 
So wow. The great chance he's going to be that now. So he, and he wanted, and he, and he made sure because, you know, say so he said he's developed a nice friendship with Caleb. Right the now, so they have a close relationship. So that was part of why he wanted to be there to take it, you know, you know, talk to his friend Caleb. But he wanted to make sure Chicago That'd understood how important it was for them be to be there. And Malik great also, chance. Malik um, rescheduled with another to sweat swap with another team as well to make sure he can come today as well for the Bears for his top thirty visit. So listen, I got a question really quick before we answer uh, Nomad's question. Uh, and I'll give this to you guys and possibly, you know, uh, what Nomad is saying. He said, I would dip into would next be. year's yep. capital yep. if I were polls. Yep. Absolutely. Let me ask, yeah, absolutely. You, yes. absolutely. Let me ask yes. you guys a question, absolutely. though, about that. I agree. I agree. But to what point? Because what is a first round pick next year or any of the other picks that we're potentially going to have? What value is that? Is it at 50% off? Is it? What, what are we looking at here? Because we don't really know where those line up next year until next year happens. So how much value is actually there when you say, I'm going to give you a first round or a second round or a third round, fourth round, fifth round, all the way down the line? What What is it there? Do you have to couple a bunch of things together? And then, okay, we're potentially going to have up to 11. So where does it stop? Do you stop at eight? Do you not go past eight? So you say, we're going to cap it off at eight and give up three picks where those guys are at, where they fall. And then what your is it about conviction? What do you guys think? I think that? it's where more about conviction. Yeah. 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 I honestly think we're at, the, we're at this building stage where it's about conviction. Pose, once Pose gets his quarterback, I think all bets are off as far as everything else. It's about building around the guy. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, and I've read, read this on offense or defense. Then I think he's you think all bets are off with those picks. It's about accumulating the talent that he feels is necessary to get him over the hump, to get him rings to maximize championship for the quarterback before he hits that big contract. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think that any pick next year is off limits. To be honest with you, I think all of them should be on the, you know, should be on the table. If yeah. they're if they're looking to 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 utilize this draft, which this draft is pretty deep. So if you're looking to utilize this draft, I say, hey, all picks next year are, are on the table. You you should use that as bait to 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 for upper movement for this draft. So if that's a first round pick next year, or even our second or or Carolina second, you know we mm-hmm. we 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 have some draft capital, so we we have room, we have wiggle room here to 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 make some moves. Yeah, yeah. Smitty, the only pick I wouldn't trade is that Carolina too. It might be another, <laughs> might be another first round pick essentially. <laughs> yeah, it could Dude. be a top two. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is gonna be a top two. That team's gonna be yeah. awful again, bro. They schedule is brutal. Yeah, that's, schedule a farm, is brutal. that's a farm system for the rest of the league right now. Yeah, I you know, there's no guarantees next year about what's gonna happen. A lot of different things shake out when it comes to you know the NIL money. There's a lot of uncertainties, but uh make no mistake about it. If you have some conviction and you know you're gonna have up to 11 picks next year and you re- really want to get a one one or two guys that solidify especially yeah, they're it. talking about in the first three rounds because after that the drop off is supposed to be pretty ridiculous as far as talent goes so i w- really wouldn't try to couple or do anything after that so if you feel convicted and you want to get a second round this year or another third round or something like that without wasting too much draft capital, you know. I don't want to see us dip down really far to where we're at this year again next year. Uh, but I, I definitely see maybe coupling one or two, you know, getting one or two more. I I, I could get behind that for sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, great show. You guys have a lot of good uh points. I love the chat. They were very uh. They they hit on everything really quick. Uh, something happened earlier in the chat. A guy mentioned uh, the wins and losses, and I says, "Could you please help us out and pick up who our opponents are?" And he actually went and did it. So I want to 
spend a little bit of time. Oh, not they, at, uh, not could they predicted us with an eight point five win total. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're. Yeah. I'm trying to dig ourselves all the way up to that. Uh, man, we talked a lot in here in the chat. Man, I'm still rolling the up. Chat man. Is busy. One over a hundred in the chat. Yeah, man. That yeah. Was awesome. You guys are awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, still looking. Keep, Keep covering for me, boys. I'll get there. <laughs> oh yeah, you got. They've been keeping it bumping in here for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it is a high pick, Smitty. Yeah, that is a that that uh, Carolina pick is going to be a definitely a high pick, yeah, especially yeah. if those teams lose their first round picks after those investigations are over. But 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 so 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 here's my take. So you say not to trade that pick, but what if we can trade that pick and move back into the first round this year? Wouldn't that be comparable to next year? True, but it depends on who we who it is, though. Though you know, it's got to be. It better be somebody damn well worth it that's going to start. <laughs> well, well, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, saying, but it, I, it, I think anybody coming out of the first round pretty much is going to be, um, bona fide. Going to be, yeah, I, 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 you know, most likely. So he's got you know, Arizona, Minnesota twice, Carolina, Tennessee, Washington, New England, and Indianapolis. Is, uh, let's uh, let's break that down, boys. Uh, let's go around the table really quick. We won't spend this at nauseum. Just really quickly, you know, before the draft, right, Q? So it's just loose. Nobody's going to hold our name to this. Don't go rush out and get on underdog fantasy and lose a bunch of money. <laughs> but uh, a- Arizona, what do you guys think about the Arizona? I think we definitely- we should win that game. Yeah, we should win that. Game. Yeah. yeah, we we beat we'll- them one away already. That I don't. They yeah, yeah. And we're I'm definitely, definitely gonna be at that game. game. I'm gonna be at that game. Minnesota. I mean, we don't even know who the QB is at this point. Who's their QB over there? Does they Sam have Darnold. A QB? What? Yeah. Sam Darnold. Darnold? Yeah, yeah. Darnold. We, we should win both of those guys. We should win both of those guys. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we ain't got no sign either. Carolina. That's a W. That's a okay. That's a I mean, obviously, some of these are rhetorical, right, boys? I, I'm not that far out, you know. Uh, Tennessee. That's a dub. That's, that's, that's a dub. Game. That's that's a, that's one it should be, but I think that's a tricky game. I think that's a tricky game. I think that's a tricky game. Ain't no tricky game. Did game. you see how much they unloaded? You, you no, see no, how much they unloaded? As, 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 as far as one of those trap games, you know. Yeah, I think that's a tricky game. Trap. I think that's a yeah. tricky yeah. game. As far as it, you know, it always happens every year. We got too many veterans on our defense, though, to make that to let that be a trap game, though. That's the thing. Let's see what happens, though, man. So we'll say 50-50 because I'm with you on the trap. I And I do think that they help themselves in the free agency. And I do think that they're going to help themselves in the draft. Um, I don't think that they got any better by getting rid of their head coach. I really like their head coach over there. But oh, verbal? Yeah, verbal. Yeah. yeah. To, to that point, uh, let's move on to Washington. I think that's an that's easy a one. W, right? That's a W. That's a W. That's a W. one of the worst teams in the league next year. New okay. England, that's, New England should be an easy that's w. w. That's a W. Colts, that should be an easy W. I don't too, think right? so. I don't know I don't about that. So. I don't think that's so. Gonna I think Indianapolis is going to be tough. I think Indianapolis is going to be tough. It all depends on who the quarterback is, because if Richardson is still not healthy, I think and it's somebody else, that's I a think W. Be healthy. Richardson's playing. I, you know, saying that that changes things. He's he's the X factor for me. If he's not, uh, if he, we were playing him early and he still ain't got his wheels under him yet. We can win that game maybe, but if it's like in the middle of the season where he's got going, you know, and he's playing, you know, that's it's a be a dog fight. It's a dog fight. Yeah. yeah. That I was more of a dog I fight than it is in the Tennessee game. Because you gotta remember, you gotta remember Matt Everflus has played against the AFC South. That's where he came from. He he's made a living of beating the dog, you know, on his defense, beating the hell out of Tennessee. He's made a living of doing that. Okay, boys. So let let's just pretend that we're gonna uh, settle in at six and two there, Tennessee right. and the Colts. Obviously, we suck in the AFC South, right? That's what we're saying. Um, moving on. So those those are those six and two out of those eight games. Now let's these go. are away games, right? These are away games. Yeah. Those okay. Are the here's ones. the other one: uh, Jacksonville, Rams, Seattle. That was gonna be tough. Tough. Yeah, those are gonna to be tough. I honestly I feel the Rams were not game. tough. I the think Rams and Seattle are gonna to be tough. I don't think the Rams game is gonna to be tough. I the think Rams and Seattle are not gonna to be tough games. Yeah. P. Carroll ain't P. Carroll ain't there no more. That's a whole new team. 
I'm not afraid of Seattle anymore. And plus, we got their offensive coordinator. What the hell are they yeah. gonna do? That we, we, and, and say he Donald, knows everything they gonna do. And, a, and a Aaron Donald, this less Rams team. Uh, I don't feel. Yeah, it might be the Lambs without uh, Aaron Donald, bro. That's a huge loss. Uh, Jacksonville, they look, be, they, they underachieve. And look, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not buying Trevor Lawrence. You know what I'm saying? This man had all that all them weapons, and he still found a way to f it up, bro. He. It's a little oh. scary with them, too, because this is a prove-it deal. This is year where they have to figure out whether they're going to move on without Trevor at, because uh, they're going to I think they're going to keep him. I don't think they're going to keep him. Yeah, but it's going to be us. They're going to lose. They still lose it's, to us. I still think they be, lose to us. Yeah, I do, too. I think we go ahead and handle uh, all three of those games. So now that would be nine wins right there. Now let's nine, get into yeah, our nine, own – Let's get into our own, uh, you know, order of business with uh, Green Bay and Detroit. What are, what are we doing there? I say we, we split. Uh, honestly, I, I think, say split. I think we split with both of them. No, we sweep Detroit, in my opinion. I don't think we let what happened to us last year with them, you know, giving up that game. Maddie That's Rufus 11 wins. So I, I honestly think we sweep Detroit and we split with Green Bay. That's 12 see, wins. See here's, see, here's the thing. Yeah. I mean, that's how I see it. Really, it's still Matt Eberflus, though. That's the only factor, man. <laughs> and I honestly think that – look, part of it has to – I think part of him – I think Ryan Poles did the right thing. He let him take those lumps. And I think that was his growing – you know, he had to grow from that. He let him pick that staff and let them take them lumps. And yeah, now – I told you, man. This guy's <laughs> lit, bro. No man found him a freaking baller, bro. This guy hey is man, real. it's not Kool Aid. You know, say, look, no, that's not Kool Aid. When the regular he's rookie, he's been proving it though, bro. I mean, he he, look, I'm sold on Caleb. Like some players just come in the league and they just, they just that damn good. And he's just one of those guys. I got that feeling. He's just gonna be that damn good. I hope so. It, I, it, I, it's, I, not, it's, I, it's not gonna be hard for him to be that good. Look at him. Look at the team, bro. We're, we're we're speaking on as if he's. Let's say he coming to all the hype and he lives up to it. There's no reason why, you know, we should be we should be right there. And I'm just basically like if he comes in playing the way he does at college right mm -hmm. now, with the way he played, like with the with this offense, with the guys we have in place now, especially with Shane Waldron developing him. Um <laughs> bro, but, 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 but yeah, but but see, but see when you do when you think that way, when you expect a rookie to come in and be all pro his rookie year. That's just not realistic. No, no one's saying I, all I, pro. I, I, to CJ Stroud. No one's saying that, all that, pro. But, but CJ Stroud is not. You that, know what I'm saying? It, it's happened. Normally, though. That's that doesn't at. happen normally. That doesn't happen normally. It's I been think, happening more frequently, I think, though. I think Caleb has the ability to be a star quarterback. I don't Brock think. Bowers. I, don't I mean, think, uh, uh, Brock, uh, what's his, you know, the, the, the kid the, from the, the reason. Reason. The reason why I think Kevin will be good, Brock Purdy, be, you know, well, Brock you Purdy is a part of a system. I think if you put Brock Purdy in a different system, I don't think he he does well. That's not the point, though. The point is, you know, these rookie quarterbacks are coming in knowing what they got to do. See, Caleb guys, is definitely smarter and more cerebral and more athletic than him. It's, and it's, not, it's, it's not about Caleb. Uh, it's, the, it's the talent around him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why the Bears can get nine, ten wins. Because the talent that's around why him. Brock Purdy. That's why I brought up Brock Purdy. We barely said anything about Caleb the whole fucking show. The whole thing <laughs> is, their, our defense was top fucking five. Our freaking it, it, everything that's going on. We got two bona fide number one wide receivers. We about to go out and possibly go get another wide receiver. We got a bona fide two really good tight ends. We got gr really good running backs. We're gonna we have an uh, improved offensive line, dude. All Caleb has to do is not fuck it up. He, he just, just got to be yeah, yeah. If he I plays agree. average, we're going to win. That's, if he plays average, we're going to have nine or ten wins. I get yep. why the, ceil the ceiling is playoffs. It's not that hard. We almost had ten wins last year, and we had two wins from a backup freaking quarterback. It's yeah. not that difficult, boys. Look at the – I mean, the math is mathing right here. No. The, For these me, these yeah. opponents are not that freaking difficult. For me, it's not more about Caleb. It's more about the team around him, the players around him, where I think the Bears get nine, ten wins. Yeah. I said ten games, I said 10 games is the floor anyway. You don't have to drive it. So, you don't even have to drive not it. Not right just now. On the bus. Not right now. But next year, yes. 
Like for me, for me, I say 10 wins was the floor anyway, because of like I said, our defense matches up very well with everybody we're playing on our schedule. I, I our defense shouldn't be scared of damn near, no, ain't nobody I ain't, with our defense. I ain't, I'm not afraid of any of the offenses we're playing this year. Period. Mm-hmm. We've always smacked Detroit's offense. Should have beaten both times. And we held the pass with one receiver. With one receiver, we did that. Now we got two. And a terrible play three. caller. Not to yeah. mention that. A terrible play what caller. A shitty play caller. Thank you, BJ. My thing is, is like, like I said, with the defense alone, our defense alone is going to win us eight damn games. Well, eight well, games on the schedule, we can win. We can win eight games with our defense well, alone. Well, Pinky, what was the stat the last six weeks? The Bears defense finished first in every major category. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you sleepy. You sleepy. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, like, we, won, we, held, we held the Packers to, what was it, their second or their lowest point uh, total of the season? Bro, all I got to say is I hope 10 Bears comes in this hard when we actually do all this and we bump the narrative and we take care of all these guys that – I'm telling you, these teams look weak on it, man. They look weak on it. Seriously. So, so, I hope so for I hope four two in the division. Four two hold in our on, division. Hold on, Pinky. Hold on, Pinky. Let me say something. If you're coming hard on my boys right now, I hope you come equally hard when you got a bunch of egg on your face because <laughs> we really handle business. We we're about to handle business this year, bro. We're about yeah. to take the north. And I guess hope what? So. I Don't hope make so. my freaking GM look ignorant. He knows what he's doing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. For sure. I'm telling you. I just hope that we're not we're not pushing the gun too fast. I think think, because you got I can promise you right now because I I got I got I'll go try to find it and bring them up as little clips maybe. But there's there's podcasts in Houston, the you know, Texan football podcast. They were saying the same thing about CJ Stroud, the way we're talking about Caleb. The way we're talking about Caleb is the way they talked about C.J. Stroud. And, that, and they didn't have nowhere near as the, the wide receiver talent that we got. We don't. They didn't have the big, big name talent. Hey, like, Pinky, let, let me ask you a question. Who did it better, though? Did Houston do it better, or is, is Poles doing it better round two, setting it up, setting it up? Oh, for we're doing game. it way better because the difference, we, the difference, the difference between what how the Texans did it we're and how biased. we did it we're is that they, we're they, they, they had to literally – the Texans literally had to give up a lot of capital to get the, the talent that they needed. They gave up a lot – they gave up like two to three years' worth of talent of, of other – draft capital to get the guys that they got this year, the talent that they had. They had to, they had to just take away know, what got, and then so. on top of that, they spent a ton of money on they overspent on a lot of the guys in free agency this year. If if hold on, if and you if, look at what they, they did, just I got did you just see what they Houston, just signed? Are they traded for? I think Houston did oh, a little bit better, man. Yeah. If you if Step you look at when they started man. off but what they I, did said, I said we're doing it for the rookie as far as like how they start off for Stroud compared to what how we're yeah. doing it. We're 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 way ahead of the, the curve oh, compared oh, to no. them. Yeah, we because they they're doing everything they can now to build around him. Now we're gonna have more money where we can go into free agency next year for Caleb and literally buy the best offensive line in the NFL next year. And we will and we'll still have money to get other players. Mm. That's the thing. We've already built a team through the draft already before we even got the quarterback. And we literally got Ke- we we got Keenan Allen for Skittles and some in a pack of damn smokes. So 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 I, I, I hear I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But I'm gonna go back to the money part, you know, because I'm all about the money part. Oh, here so, we go. Here so, we go. So, <laughs> so, listen, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. So, you know. You know, we, we got we get Caleb, right? And then you're talking about next year signing some more people. What about all these all these players that are contracts are coming up? You're gonna eventually have to pay Tevin. You're gonna eventually have to pay reside um of uh, DJ. You're gonna have to um you're gonna have to pay who else? There's gonna be other people up. So you gotta think about these players. Well, I am that's why I know we're gonna have to have- and just and just, just you know, just throwing money here and there. So you got to do it 
you know, the thing is, you gotta, the thing, you is, gotta do the thing is, the key guys that we need to sign will get signed. DJ Moore yeah. and Tevin Jenkins, if he can stay healthy, Tevin Jenkins needs to prove that he that he deserved that money, and he may have to sign for less. You know, say he only like, missed two games last year. Um, yeah, but he can't stay monster, healthy. Man. His body of work shows that he can't stay healthy. So he may not get that big contract he's looking for. And he doesn't have everything else on his contract. Like everyone thought that um <laughs> we all everybody thought that JJ was gonna break the bank, and we still got him for a steal. Oh, and then you gotta also keep in mind too, even though I know you're not big on uh Braxton <laughs> Jones, but if Braxton Jones works out to where he can man the left side of the line, they're going to have to pay him. Yeah, I don't think that's going to make money, though. He's not going to get make big money. And, I don't think so. If, he's if, a if, he, if he's a starting left tackle, you're going to have to pay him. He's no, we picked him up out of the we picked him up out of the fifth round and that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Yeah, but you have to look at you have to look yes. at uh you have to look at his pancakes, you have to look at his pressures, yeah. you have to look at the time off the field, you have to look at all that, BJ. When they when they re-sign guys on the offensive line, it's a whole lot different. I understand what you're yeah. talking about yeah, about yes, start, starting money. Yeah. It's gonna be different. It's not gonna he be has what it. you, you gotta you also gotta remember, you gotta look at their credentials. Tevin Jenkins nor Braxton Jones have had enough Pro Bowls under their belt, no All Pros or anything like that. They don't have any really no, no, good that, accolades. Those things come into consider- those yeah. things come into consideration when you're going for those contracts. And the fact that, like I said, with Tevin Jenkins, just like with JJ, just like with uh, Jalen Johnson, those injuries came into play. That is why he didn't get top top dollar. The injuries will come into play for both of those young men, and the fact that. Braxton Jones is a fifth round pick. He's not getting top dollar. I don't care how well he plays, unless he unless he does what unless he pulls a J- Jalen Johnson. He goes all pro, makes the Pro Bowl and stuff like that. You know, don't give up a sack at all this year. And he's oh yeah, he, that's, the, that's, the, that's the it's ball. not getting top dollar. And even if he does do that this year, he still won't get top dollar because they're gonna look at his whole first four years in totality. Because you gotta remember next year. He's still on his rookie contract. We ain't got to worry about him until next year. So, I'm not, I'm, so, so when I say top dollar, I'm not talking about – He's to worry about him. So yeah, he's not, I, I'm not talking about the best paying – I'm not saying he's going to get the – no, I'm just, I'm just I'm explaining to you that, you know, we ain't got to pay him until 2026. Next year we got all this cap space. We can afford to maybe go after like a Trent Williams type guy that may be a better value to get us over the hump next year or something if he's not where we need him to be. We can Damn, Pinky, it. you're like the Energizer Bunny. I've had like 38 different thoughts, and I haven't been able to get one out in yeah. 21 Go ahead, buddy. My bad, homie. Dude. My bad. He got me going about the line, you know what I'm saying? Two ears, one mouth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, Pinky, but, don't really, Pinky not really a Braxton Jones fan, so that's why he, he won him out of Chicago know. anyway. No, BJ, B, BJ, I think he wants to give uh, our <laughs> offensive line a chance, but he doesn't want to overpay him. It's 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 a really weird spot to be in, but I I will say, as an offensive lineman, when you have a, anyone on the team, really, if you have a guy that had that bad of play calls and nothing is moving north, and it just it doesn't make sense, you know, it, and the math ain't math, and it's really hard to get behind. It's really hard to see what you got on the team, BJ. It really is. I think if we start to show productivity early and we come out the gate and we start winning some games, you're going to see a whole le- level of confidence. Confidence in the NFL and in sports is everything. These boys that are on the team are really going <laughs> right to – You're going to see what they got, bro. You're going to see what they got. It's 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 going to be a whole different uh, team if these coaches are really going to come in and lead this team the way that uh, – they're supposed to be led, you know what I mean? I, I really I really feel that way. And I, I think you're going to see a different side of Eberfuss, too, because now you have a bona fide defensive coordinator in Washington. You have a bona fide offensive coordinator in Waldron. And now he gets to do all of the, you know, the, the CEO things of, of the team better instead of be focusing on, you know, defensive side and all that. I, I think it's going to be – 
I think it's going to be a lot better. It, it on paper it looks a lot better, at least. Q, what do you say about yep. that? I told you. Yep, there it is. Yeah. As far as I'll say that again, I'm sorry, man. I was reading the comments and stuff like that. When Caleb Williams comments, dude, I gave freaking ten bears uh, flowers way too early. This guy's been trolling us ever since we freaking gave him his props. <laughs> this is freaking ridiculous, man. I would I mean, never go on someone else's. That's why I've been reading there. his comments, man. <laughs> he called me dude, off. I, I'm about ready to to not read him, man. This is ridiculous, yeah, he man. He caught me off guard with someone. I would <laughs> never go on Nomad and do this straight up, but or anywhere else. I would not do this the whole time. I mean, this is relentless. Up, <laughs> I don't even know why he's in here except to just clown us, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it was a great podcast, all things considered, man. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you for everybody in the chat keeping it positive, <laughs> keeping it real. Uh, it was great to have uh, um, everybody out here. It was great to have Bishop earlier. So nice when he can come out and uh, be a breath of fresh air and stay positive and keep it real. And I really like his takes. I like your guys' takes. It was really fun going through the top 30 and uh yeah man uh let's go ahead and uh close it out guys what do you guys got to say man q yeah. oh man just i appreciate you guys man you know just waiting for the, the draft very excited man it's very exciting time to be a bears fan man very exciting yep. and i appreciate i yep. appreciate all three of you guys man yes, yeah you too man love the hat too by the way q great yeah, hat, that's man. a dope hat that is a dope hat yeah i caught this when i was out in chicago last year man all right, yeah. all right. What's up? You caught that last year and it's still clean like that, bro? It was yeah, I really wear I don't, it. Was, it was white hats, man. I don't really wear these white hats like that. It should get go outside, <laughs> all the dust get on it, man. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, man. For BJ? me, oh, go ahead, BJ. So I, I enjoyed my, I enjoyed this. This was, this was great. This is, this is like a breath, a breath of fresh air for my day. This is, this is, this is wonderful. You know. <laughs> Talking, talking bears. I, I can do this all day. Just talking bears, you know, whether whether it's good or bad. I, you know, shit talking or whatever. I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, BJ, hold on really quick. Uh, BJ, I want to give you roses right now, bro. This uh, to me, I, I don't, I don't catch everything a hundred all the way through, right? But to me, this is your best podcast yet, bro. I mean, you really. Uh, you really shined out, man. You look good, man. It, it, it was really it. good, man. You yeah, sounded man. good, clear. It was great having your pops on here, man. It, it was really cool podcast with you, bro. I appreciate this podcast with you, BJ. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Hey, you know, this has been number love. You already know how I feel, man. I enjoy it all. You know what I'm saying? The homerism, you know, you said I enjoy the energy. I love it. I love your tracks for trying to keep me level. <laughs> no, you're good, bro. You're good. I keep you level, you know what I'm saying? Because I'll sit here and talk enough for everybody. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you're good. You know what I'm, saying? I'm definitely looking forward to the draft. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? I won't be here that Thursday, so I need y'all to hold it down for it, brother. I'm going to be having my surgery on my, my left foot and stuff and whatnot. So, oh, man, you know, I won't up, be there, but you know what I'm saying? But it's all good. I'm going to be there. Prayers, bro. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Love, good vibes. Absolutely love everybody in the chat. You guys are, you know, y'all yeah. fucking amazing. You fan, yeah. you guys are the reason why we do this is why we love doing what we do. And yeah. it's a privilege to be able to speak with y'all in the chat, chat it up, kick it up with you guys, you know, grow as a community and a family with y'all. And is we 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 thank you guys for inviting us into y'all home through the podcast, you know what I'm saying, the talk bears football. So it's a pleasure and an honor, you know, from Chicago sports podcast and from the Pinkston family. I, I appreciate and love all y'all for that. So thank you guys. You know what I'm saying? I'll let, you know, Brandon send us out, you know, but you know, shot town up, bear down, love and goodbye. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, re really quickly. Uh, did, did anybody catch any of the scores today? Uh, before we leave, I know we got to cover all of Chicago sports, but uh, especially that, that NIT uh, Indiana, I think was playing, uh, they had a game at six. Do you guys know the final score to that? Uh, uh, I'm checking right now. Um, Let's not talk about Larry. the Red Sox, please. Let's they, not talk about the Red Sox. They lost 10 to 1 today. Oh, God. Why did you even have to bring that up? They got smacked. Oh, yeah. Do my, I had to do it, bro. I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? 
we gotta go to the baseball scores. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta we gotta talk about it. I mean, it's, it's it, it was that's rough. That's Cubs rough. were off today. Yeah, Cubs were off. Yeah, I don't think the Enjoy, you know. Event. Um, it looks like uh, the NIT. It looks like um, Larry Bird's home. Indiana yeah, State. it looks like looks like Hall one against um, Seton Hall mm-hmm. one against Indiana State. Yeah, they beat seventy nine yeah. to seventy seventy seven was the score. It was a very close, game. close game. That was real close. And I wonder yeah. if they're gonna have a parade out here then since Seton Hall one. Pray for NIT. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, let me ask you guys a question. Tomorrow's game. Yeah. Women. I mean, I never thought. I mean, I got a daughter, so I always embrace and I look sure. for, for for women to shine, you know, raised by my mom, whatever. She was my mom and my pops uh, all in one. So all encompassed, you know, you know, uh, dear mama, all that two box good stuff, you know, but seriously. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Seriously. I'm excited, man. I mean, I could not be more excited. I really want to watch that game. How about you guys? You gonna oh, yeah. you guys gonna carve some time out to watch that game? Oh yeah, I'm I'm yep. looking forward to watching the, the UNLV of the women's team, South Carolina. They're gonna destroy whoever they play. Man. Oh yeah, the South Carolina is gonna win the whole they, thing. they gotta win because they, they the team of my the women's bracket that I pick. Please. Like Illinois team. already let me down. Illinois let me down. Please, stuff. Don't do you talking about the men's bracket? Oh, man. yeah. I'm Illinois crazy. let me down. But hey, if we're gonna lose, you're gonna, I'm gonna lose to the defending champs. So, you yeah, but you don't lose like that, man. No, the defending champs got got eliminated. No, you can't win it last. Oh, you talking talk about you talking about you yeah, talking about the men's? Talk you, you don't you don't lose like that. Yeah. Hey, oh, they, they got demolished by UConn. Demolished. Hey, if match, you know, Styles makes fights, and I knew that was good. That was a possibility. If we didn't come but, with our A game, that was going to happen. But Brandon, they went the it's, whole it's, it's, second it's, half into the eleven minute mark without scoring a point. How do you do that? Geez, this is legit, though. But but Brandon, to your point, man, that South Carolina women's team, that shit reminded UNLV from back in the nineties, bro. Yeah, That's really. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. they they get they're undefeated. They they're beat. undefeated. Wow, yeah. that's a veteran team, and they deep. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who's right. between. Um, uh, it's a toss up for me between. Um, because uh, I think right now it's uh South Carolina is playing against Iowa. If I'm not mistaken. No, 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 no. no. they're it's playing against UConn uh, and Iowa. Yeah, so UConn, UConn and Iowa, Iowa and, uh, that's going to be a game. That's going to oh, yes, be a game. NC State, NC State's playing South Carolina. That's yeah. going to be a blowout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NC State's not going to be in that game. That, that, that's Bro, I tell you what I'm kind of excited about. I would like to see Purdue and UConn because of the, the height. You know, you got Ed, uh, what's his name, Eddie? Um, yeah. and, and that other guy who's like, I think he's an inch taller over there at UConn, that, that yeah. center over there. I think yeah. that would be cool to go watch those two those two big boys battle it out. You know what I, I mean? Think Purdue, I think Purdue is the only team that can really beat UConn, man, at this it's point. It's going to really? be the wins at all. Purdue's but probably, only, Purdue's the, win the, whole only the only if they if if Edie does not get into foul trouble, if yeah. Edie gets okay. into foul trouble, Purdue's done. But one thing about Connecticut, they play some tough defense, man. Oh my yeah, god, we saw. But I still think Purdue's <laughs> Purdue. I, I still think Purdue's gonna do it. I think Purdue does it. I think Purdue wins the whole thing. And I, yes, I'm being biased. I'm a Big Ten guy. So, so what's it yeah, gonna look probably, like in the what's it gonna look like in the draft? Do you think the sky? You think uh, Chicago could get any one of these top women? I mean, where? Uh, where yeah, they the, the Chicago draft? sky. I think they got the fifth pick. I think they got the fifth pick. Third, third, third overall pick. pick. Yeah, they gonna get the third. And we have the third and the eighth overall pick. So oh, they made third and eighth and the first. Yeah, we have the third and the eighth because we we traded we traded a lot of our picks, a lot of our players from the championship team. So Bro. we got a lot of young guys, the young ladies on our. We got a young, young hooping team. Like we got a lot of shooting, but no defense. So Angel Reese is projected to be the third overall, the third overall pick to the to the Let's Chicago. Go. Oh, that'll be dope. Oh, she yeah, declared for the draft. Dope. She did declare for the draft. Perfect for Chicago. Um, she is um not this week, but next week she is slated to um. You know they're you no, know, they do like meetings she's tougher with, than Kayla, bro. So she's doing meetings with um with a lot of the teams in the top three and the Chicago yeah. Skies on her list, obviously. Um, the 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 young lady that plays um at Stanford, the center at Stanford, she declared oh, for the draft. Yeah. She's one oh, of the other awesome. picks that they're looking at as well. I think she's a center or a power four for for Stanford. Mm. She's another pick in eight or three 
for for the Chicago Sky as well. So, no, Pinky, are you telling me we're going to have to cover the Sky coming up here this following I, season after this draft? I, I've been, I do look, I do I've been covering them since they existed. I love that. They, I love the Chicago Sky. The fact that, you know what I'm saying, ever since the Ella Deladon days, you know, you know what I'm saying, when we drafted her. That man. was crazy. They traded her. What she wanted to be traded, though. She no, had, I'm talking about. I'm talking about Chicago sports podcast, bro. It sounds like yeah. we're going to have to start covering the sky, bro. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. They, they look, that's quite cold. Look, they, yeah. they, you know, say the fact, you know, the fact that Dwayne Wade's a part of the ownership now, um, he just bought, oh, big, he? yeah, he just bought a big stake into the team this year. Oh, um, nice. so, and that he, he bought the team after the, the head coach and the, the coach slash GM of the Chicago sky left to go into the, the NBA. NBA. Yeah. I remember that. He yeah. took a, with a job with Toronto, which is I'm happy for him. Um, but so yeah, we the, the the team is in good hands. You know, I hate it's sad that we had to get rid of all most of the, the ladies on that squad, the championship squad, but we're gonna be in good hands with the you know two top ten picks this year. So we're gonna be straight. Fellas, you guys are staring at the the largest uh freaking ice pop in the whole freezer of a garage, man. <laughs> I am sorry I'm get you out of here, man. I tried to stand up a little bit to stretch, and I'm like, oh man, I think I might cramp up on camera. So <laughs> for real, man. Oh, for real, no. for real. Oh man. man. Let's get All you right, out of here, buddy. Yeah. Yes, All right, boys. Hey, thanks again, man. I appreciate you guys. Have Thank a good you. night. Bear down. Bear down. Bear down. Hold up. What one second after we close out.